Becker? Here. Donahue? Here. Hammond? Here. Adamant? Here. Koth? Here. Lassard? Here. Landowski? Excused, although he may be arriving later. Matichek? Here. Racer? Here. Van Akron? Here. Vanderweel? Here. Bercy? Quorum is present. Now we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Longman. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Carlson, you're here. Next, we have the approval of the minutes from July 23, 2012. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the minutes from uh, July 23rd. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. aye. Opposed? Chair votes aye. Next, we have the public forum on agenda items. Does anybody wish to be heard on any of the agenda items tonight? For the record, Dulcie, could you uh, state your full name and address, please? Dulcie Johnson, 1306 North 3rd Street, Sheboygan. Thank you. Excuse me, uh, Alderman <clears throat> Matichek, could you turn that one air conditioner off, please? <clears throat> Thank you. You'll have three minutes. <laughs> Thanks. Please one pull the, the mic down a little further. Thank one you. of the items on your agenda tonight is the garbage fee. On November 9th, 2011, at a committee of the whole meeting, Alderman Reisler, seconded by Alderman Carlson, moved to recommend privatizing the service. That passed seven to five. <clears throat> and at that time, Mr. Amodio, the chief administrative officer, said, financially, it makes sense to privatize. <clears throat> we wouldn't have to lay off people, we wouldn't have to spend $1.6 million to buy new garbage trucks, etc. Public Works Director Bittner noted that the majority of Wisconsin communities have privatized their garbage collection. But at the <clears throat> council meeting on, a, on the 28th of November, when the budget was finalized, <clears throat> it was decided to institute the fee, and that motion was made by Alderman Hammond and seconded by Alderman Decker. <clears throat> Some aldermen cons expressed concern about losing control if the service was privatized. I would just share with you a couple of personal experiences. <clears throat> My son lives in Belvedere, Illinois, which is about five miles from Rockford, Illinois. It's a town of about 25,000. The city does not provide garbage pickup. <clears throat> and everybody is on their own for getting their garbage uh, service contracted which is a poor way of doing it, because you've got three and four garbage trucks driving down the same street. <clears throat> he has lived there for about three years, has had the same service, very good service. They pick up all recycling, all household garbage, lawn waste, and he pays $9 a month. The fee has been the same for the three years that he has had the service. My husband owns a home in Satellite Beach, Florida. <clears throat> it's unincorporated, and the county contracts for the garbage pickup. So it's part of the property tax bill. Um, they pick up garbage three times a week, household garbage twice a week, all recycling and all yard waste. I'm not recommending that for Sheboygan, but the cost per month for that is $10.50, and then they pay a $4.50, everybody in the county pays $4.50 a month to maintain the landfill. So that's $15 a month. But they have very good service, excellent service. The fee has remained the same over 10 or 12 years. So uh, for those of you who are concerned about losing control, my experience would not wear, wear, bear that out. I don't want to see anybody lose their jobs, and I don't have any problem with the present system, but I believe <clears throat> that there are some services that government must provide, and I think that government should not do what the private sector can do, and I would support privatizing the garbage service. Thank you. Uh, David, could you, uh, Alderman Van, uh, Van Acker, could you turn the fans down just a little bit? It's really noisy up here. I think that'll help. Thank you. 
Does anybody else wish to be heard in the public forum? Does anybody else wish to be heard? Does anybody wish to be heard? Next, we'll move on to item number six, Chairman's comments. I do have a few tonight. And these are mainly, I th these are mainly addressed to the, uh, to the public, and that is kind of the budget realities the city of Sheboygan is facing, along with the rest of the state. Uh, the 2013 budget uh, directive coming down from the state of Wisconsin is that uh, municipalities in Wisconsin are not going to be able to raise property taxes. And the second thing is that uh, we're probably not going to see an increase in shared revenue, which I believe is about, according to Director Amodio, is about $10.8 million a year. Uh, really, we haven't seen an increase in our shared revenue for the last few years. In fact, I think we've even seen a, seen a decrease. Then as we look into uh, what's going to be happening in 14 and 15 on the state level, now that the recall election is over and Governor Walker is going to be the governor for the next couple of years, uh, the state legislature will be working on the biennial, biennial budget for 2014 and 15. And because of redistricting, even though that the Democrats still have the state Senate, because of redistricting, all, everything that I've heard coming out of Madison is that there's a, a, a great chance that after the November elections that the Republicans will be getting back the state Senate. And if they do, uh, with the way the finances have been for with the state of Wisconsin the last few years, it's highly unlikely that the governor is going to allow us to raise taxes, not only the governor but the state legislature, is going to allow us to raise property taxes in 14 or 15. And also, uh, unless the state economy greatly improves in that next biennial, biennial budget or before, it's highly unlikely that we'll be, we will be getting any more insured revenue. So where that leaves us is probably a directive from our state government that the local governments are going to have to make very difficult choices and in some cases probably very unpleasant choices in order to balance our budget for 14 and 15. So that's what I wanted to kind of pass out to the, to the public that's watching tonight is kind of the framework of what we're dealing with for not only 13, but in that next biennial budget for 14 and 15. We'll move on now. Uh, I'm going to juggle the agenda slightly tonight. I'm going to go down to item number 13 first, and that's council document number 3.7 from July 2nd of 2012. RO number 77-12-13, Mayor requesting strategic fiscal planning to meet and include on the agenda various items. Mayor, if you'd like to step up and we'll be hearing your presentation on the budget. I'm not used to sitting over here. It'll take me a second to uh, get up the files that we're going to talk about, if you so please have uh I want to thank you, Mr. Chairman, for putting this on the agenda. The first thing that everybody got was the outline of uh, what I'm going to talk about tonight, uh, establishing goals for the 2013 budget, 
uh, mayor's recommendation, the recommendations I want you to consider for the 2013 budget. Review a undesignated balance, uh, undesignated fund balance uh, resolution and then talk about uh, fund commitments in the future along with 14 and 50, 2014 and 2015 budget goals. So far we're still waiting for technology. This one then? Emails are in. Your Excel is here. Did you want no. Outlook? No, I want Outlook. Okay, Outlook. I'll start talking a little bit about the uh, <laughs> I don't know if we're going to be able to get in. I'll do it without. Um, I start talking a little bit about the goals and the uh, objectives of, of what the 2013 budget are, and I'm really not sure what that, what that is. You as a council, um, if you look at the second list, um, have set a guidelines of, of, a, of a date calendar of when you want things to happen, but if you look at the second third page, which is this one, it says that the goals and objectives of the, are from the common council committees are supposed to be established each year prior to the starting of the, the um, budget process. That's the number one thing that's, that's in there. You know, uh, Alderman Bourne, and I believe it was Alderman Versi back in February or March, brought forward a resolution that said they would like to see a budget, I believe it was Alderman Bourne, minus two in... in, in uh, personnel and minus one in all other areas, something like that? It, it could be. A yeah. And that was voted on by this, by this body, and it was turned down. And that's your decision. But since that time, you haven't come up with a goal of, did you want a zero budget? Did you want a 5% increase budget? Did you want a 1% increase budget? I haven't seen that goal of what it is. And I think that's one thing that's important before we started is, what, what is that goal? And what was approved by the council to go forward on, again, do you want a zero budget? Do we want an increase from that point? Uh, in the past, and, and the goals and guidelines, I think, are pretty, are pretty self-explanatory. The guidelines are the, the two pieces that I handed you in the next section, these two. The goals and guidelines, these are under, your, under the municipal codes set up by the council on how the budget should be moved forward and what things, um, what things you wanted uh, in what order it should happen. So it's pretty, pretty precise here that a preliminary budget should be moved forward. Um, and let's go back to your timeline a little bit. We'll use that as an example because it kind of follows the guideline that's set forward in your, the guideline that I have here. Um, in March, the chief administrator 
established a budget guideline. Um, ag again, I think that guideline should be passed by the council and should be your guys' decision. The council established the uh, guidelines. That's why I have that in red, because that's what our, our municipal cold calls for. Then the department budget reviews in which we have the uh, chief administrator or the, uh, or the financial um, treasurer, finance director, sits down with all the department heads and decides if the budgets that the departments bring forward, their department requests, are given to you. And then he looks at those and looks and sees if they fit in the guidelines that you've set. That's, that's the way our ordinance is put forward. Then the preliminary budget is supposed to be prepared according to, the, uh, to our municipal code. It's supposed to be prepared and then given to the mayor. The mayor at that time sits down with the department heads and the finance director and the chairman of the committees at his discretion and goes through all the budgets. And after that, such recommendations then are set submitted to the appropriate standing committees. I'm on the f June 5th, the red one. Such recommendations are then submitted to the appropriate committees for their review. Well, we kind of skipped that. We didn't have the mayor get an opportunity to um, put forward a budget or go through and, and put forward a, a budget before this happened. So now the, let's, mo let's move on and, and preliminary job budgets have been submitted, but I, I, I think they're preliminary budgets, not executive budgets, were submitted. And on June 2nd, you okayed the timeline for what this is, which is a good idea because that's what you were supposed to do according to the municipal code, but you were supposed to do it back in March. You know, you don't, re you don't go back and, and set a schedule that already started way back in March and then adopted according to the June, uh, in July 2nd. So that's where we are in, in the current um, budget review on it and why I feel it necessary that I have to then bring forward some recommendations in budget changes like I did here. Everybody got this sheet now? No. No. Was, that, was that the one, Mayor, that you passed out a month or so ago? No, it should be a, a second one that should be with this group. There's some extras down there. It was on the one. I just got the one. Okay. I got a bunch. Does anybody have it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh. It got stuck. While you're doing that, I'll sign into this. Hopefully this one will work. Thank you. That's why it feel, I felt necessary was to give my input on the budget, um, on things that I would look at changes. What's that? Just click OK. There we go. <clears throat> Is everybody having this now? Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll go. I'll go through this and and. Is that up there now? Okay. Um, Better? All right, I'll go through some of these and if we wanna go through every one tonight, you know, I'm willing to sit here and do that. Um, let's look at the first one, which is City Hall overtime. We have the luxury of computerization here, if it works. Um, City Hall. And go into the Expenses, now Nancy probably could do this faster than I could. Um, 
So I'll just tr trug along here. And as, as we see here, um, it, gives me, it gives us a four-year comparison um, in 2010, 2011, and 2012. And in 2010, you'll see the actual usage was $3,178. In 2011, the actual usage was 1,321. And in 2012, so far, we've used $547. Everybody following that? So my question would be, why are we then budgeting uh, $5,000? And actually, we budgeted $5,100 because we have a 1% roll-up on every uh, thing, and, or 2% roll-up. So why would we budget $5,000 again when in the past three years, the most we've ever used was um, $3,000? So that's the way I came to these, uh, uh, my suggestions when it says a change in 2003 would be to subtract, I should have put that on here, to subtract from overtime account, instead of $5,000, make that $3,900. That's still more than we've used ever in the last three years, including and projected for this year. So that's how I've done the, these things. Let's move on to the next one that's on this one is custodial. And I went right by it. How many are we in the red, though? How many are we in the red? How many are we in the red? Custodial services. Again, let's let's look at 2010, the far right. It says that we budgeted 2,000. The most we used was 1,156. In 2011, we, we budgeted 2,000. The most we used was 675. In 2012, we budgeted 2,000 again um, for this amount. Uh, and so far this year, we've used 175. We're halfway through the year, and we've used 175. So again, I question why would we budget $2,000 in the upcoming budget if the most we've ever used in the past three years is 100, uh, 1,150. So my suggestion would be to take $1,000 off of this. So this is how I came to all these conclusions and I can go through the whole thing one by one if we like tonight. But I'd like to back up if, uh, if I can, Mr. Chairman. and. Before we go through this budget stuff, is there any questions about the first stuff that I handed out or anything like to talk about about the first things being the budget guidelines and objectives? Any questions from the council? Proceed. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that, you know, because we went through that and if somebody had a question, we, we could go back to that. So again, these are, these are the budget requests that I'm putting in and you see the, the uh, the reason that I'm doing it and the uses that I'm doing. Let, let, let's go down a couple more and, and uh, see what, what I'm doing and why. Um, let's go to city buildings. Next, being a municipal service building. Again, you'll have to Bear, bear with me because this isn't my real cup of tea here. But the first thing I've got on municipal service building is uh, gas for heating the... And did I go past it already? Yes, get da 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 four two fifty one four two nope. There it is. 
Let's look at this one. 2010, we budgeted 65,000, we used 40,000. 2011, we budgeted 65,000, we used 26,000. 2012, we budgeted 50,000, and we've used about 18,000. Again, about half the year. So looking at that, we're on, we're on track to, I would say, go to maybe $35,000, $40,000, and we've budgeted fifty. Now, I know we had a, a light winter last year, so rather than taking the entire $5,000 or $10,000 compared to what we used in the past, I thought we should leave another $5,000 in there, making it, instead of $50,000, let's lower that to $45,000. That's higher than we've ever used. It would be in case we have a bad winter, and, and it's there, um, but still more than we've used in the last three years. So my, my suggestion is to take $5,500. Now where I got the $500 is, again, during our budget process, on your original budgets, things like this went up 5%. So, I mean, sorry, went up 1%. So if it was budgeted 5000 in 2012, it automatically went up to $500 in 2013's budget, according to the thing that we were handed. Um, so that's why I got 5,500, because I don't see spending more money when in the past we haven't spent more than 40,000, but yet we're automatically increasing that budget line by $500. So that's where I got that number from. Again, Mr. Chairman, I can go through all of these if you want. Um, it, but they're all based on the exact same type of, of uh, formula, and I would hope that the council, either as a, as a uh, committee of the whole or back at their committees or somewhere, would take the time to do just this, to, to go through line by line. And I'm not saying I know exactly what these things are, and, and maybe there's a reason why some of this should be, and that discussion should be with the department heads on whether they feel comfortable that this, you know, um, the municipal service building, is there some reason we think the gas is going up? That discussion should be had, but yet we haven't had it. We haven't looked at, and you haven't had the opportunity like I have to have this program and to be able to look back and see what was spent in 2010 what was spent in 2011, what was spent in 2012, or, or half of 2012. You guys haven't been given that opportunity to, to do this. All we've been, you've been given is a budget compared to 2012 and comparing it to what we would want the budget in 2013 with no actual usages um, for you to, to compare to to make these kind of decisions. So that's where I'm at. Mr. Chairman, it's up to you if you want me to continue on. Um, you, may have, you may have some of these that are old, you know, that I've changed. I can tell you this is fluid. This is moving every day that I, I'm here and, and looking at things. Um, Mr. Modio and I had some discussion on, on um, the assessor's office this afternoon, and there's gonna have to be some changes in that, which I'm sure he'll explain later. Um, so some of the changes I might have made in the assessor's office might not be correct because of new news. Um, but that's one of the reasons I, I, I hope that, and I'm, I'm very happy with the fact that we started this budget process early. And that during this budget process, starting early would give us more time to go through and do it right. So going through and doing it right doesn't mean we have to live up to a, a schedule that says the mayor has to present a budget by August 1st when the final budget doesn't have to be there till November. So I would hope that you would consider as a group to look through these budgets and go through them line by line with the information on what the actual usages were in the past three years and take a look at what I'm recommending. Next thing we, we're going to talk about is undesignated fund balances. Could, could we have a couple Fine. of questions? Sure. 
Are there any questions so far for the mayor? I have one, Mayor. Uh, in this initial, this initial report that you went through, I believe it was at the public works meeting a month or so ago. Yep. Uh, at that time, you had mayor's cuts of $402,000, and your total cuts now are $279,624. Um, did you go over some of your original numbers? Yeah, like I said, this is fluid. I, you know, from the last one I handed out to the one I'm handing out tomorrow, and if you ask me a week from now, it'll probably be different because we're going through, I'm going through and looking at all the budgets uh, individually. So, yes, that has changed. Some of it was the changes in DPW where you were aware of. Um, some of the, the uh, information that I had about DPW's positions um, were from wastewater. So I had removed and changed some of that stuff. So that, that's why you see some of the changes. And the, the number that I'm recommending today, again, is something I did. Luckily, you had a 6 o'clock meeting because I was in there at till 5 to 6, um, doing some of this right up to the last minute. And again, this is going to change, you know, uh, up until the final budget is passed. Uh, I guess my follow-up question, and then Alderman Heideman has one. Uh, let's say, for example, at the end of the day, your savings would be three hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars. How would you, uh, to do away with the garbage fee? Then, where would you propose coming up with the additional uh, six hundred and sixty-nine thousand dollars? If the garbage fee for next year is going to be approximately eight hundred and sixty-nine thousand. In that original document, you had given some information in addition to your cuts. There was a shortfall and then some additional revenue and then $292,000 for savings. What, what are you projecting to do in addition to, your, let's say, hypothetically, your $300,000 cuts to get rid of the garbage fee? I think, Alderman Bourne, that will be handled in the next one. I think there's a, the last page. Am I correct? Can I have one on the last pages? There you go. Because I redid that too, based on these, um, the garbage fees. So I guess Alderman Bourne, if you'd let me continue on with the, the next thing, because that kind of ties into this. Very good. All right, thank you. And that's why I handed it out this time. Let's, I'm sorry, there's other questions about the budget. Yes. Thank I'm you. sorry, Alderman Heideman. Thank you, John. Uh, as you're scrolling through there, I saw some red. That's probably where we are over budget or we didn't have enough money budgeted. What did you do in those areas? What do I, what did you say? What did you do in those areas? I mean, you found the areas that we could cut from. Yep. What about the areas we didn't have enough money put aside for? If, like, I just put one up. See the red? Yeah. That's back in 2010. Okay. Okay. Um, I'll, there were some changes that... Here's one that's five dollars over from 2012. I, you know, if, if if we're that short, I'll throw in the five bucks. I was looking for something bigger. Okay. Um, again, that's a good question, and if I'm trying to go through and see if you can find another one quick, as you see, most of them are in 2011 and 12. Um, if there were changes where there was major overruns. Uh, Mr. Modio in the Finance Committee last year increased or changed those things to, to offset some of that. So those are already put into that? I believe so. Any other questions? Any other questions? Continue, Mayor. Thank you. Okay, the next thing that I wanted to talk to you about was the undesignated fund uh, balance. First thing we have, and I'm sorry I can't put this up on the board because I can't get to my documents. Uh, but the first thing we have is um, the first thing we have is, is is the ordinance that we have currently. This was back in I believe 19, uh, 2004, yeah, 2004, where it established a a fund balance of um, not not to be less than 18 percent of the this year's budget. So what it was saying is we had to have a fund balance of at least 18% of the current budget back in 2004. If you just switch to the next page, 
or it's his undesignated fund balances, here are some recommendations I would make to you to consider. The general fund balance, um, undesignated fund balance, shall not go, go below 30% as reported by the GASB 54 fund balance reporting definitions. Let me give you a quick brief thing about that is in 2000 and I believe it was 2010 or 2011, the state said, 2011 it was required, the state said here's new ways that you have to set up how you're going to report fund balances. And since that time, we've reported our fund balances um, by our audits in 2010 and 11 and um, all kind of get to get everybody comparing apples to apples in fund, the way you're reporting your fund balances. So you'll see changes in different people's fund balances from 2010 to 2011 because some of them would include, like we have, a $4 million cash reserve. What we use that cash reserve for is while we're waiting for taxes to be collected and things, we need to pay our bills so we have money on hand to pay our bills as the tax collection comes up. And then we have a fund balance of unreserved fund balance back in 2010 um, besides that. Well, in 2011, they said you're supposed to include all of that when you talk about your fund balances. So my recommendation is that we would say, and I'm taking a number of 30% of our fund balances, which would include our our capital money and any reserves because that's the way it's being reported. That's the way that our, that our, um, that the people that do our audits report it back to us each year. And that's the way that we can compare to every other city without wondering, do they include their cash balances? Do they have other things? They're all reporting it the same way and it's apples to apples. So that's why I would say we should re do it that way. The 30%, where did I get that number of 30%? Well, I didn't just pull it out of the air. If you flip to the next page, there's a graph. And on that graph, between my office and between the uh, League of Municipalities and contacts, I went to, you know, when we compare we want to compare other cities for things. We have a group of cities that we use as our comparables, whether we're comparing job descriptions, whether we're comparing um, how our government works, whatever. We have a set of comparables that we usually work, use that are uh, comparable in size, comparable in population, and things like that. So I asked our human resources person, who are those comparables we use? Because I didn't want to just go out and pick out, cherry pick the top ones so that I can give them to you. I asked her, what are the comparables that we always use when we're talking about what is the police chief salary? We go look at our comparables. These are the comparables they gave me. So I want to let you know this is just a, not a random, but it's the ones we always use as comparables. So if you look, you know, as I said, in 2010, if you look in the columns of 2010, look at like Fond du Lac. Fond du Lac had 3,700,000, I'm just gonna say 3.7 to round things off. $3.7 million in reserve and they had, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, they had 10 million, I'm sorry again. Let's, let's go to Eau Claire, I'm looking one above. Eau Claire had $10 million in reserves and $3.7 million in cash reserves. Now if you go to 11, mysteriously all of a sudden they have 13 million in reserves. Well it doesn't take a whole, you know, a rocket scientist to figure out they took their 10 million plus their 3 million of cash reserve and that's why they're now after 11, like every, everybody is supposed to, is reporting that as their fund reserves, having the cash. So everybody after 2011 is pretty much doing that. So that's why I wanted to point that out, that everybody now is reporting their cash reserves. Prior to that, 
Some of them were using that cash reserve and adding it, some of them weren't. So you wouldn't, didn't really know what their numbers were. But after 2011 and for 2012, all of them did, did include their cash reserves. If you look at the table far to the right, it'll give you a percentage of what other communities have put aside as their reserve funds based on what their budgets are. Appleton's put, has 25%. Beloit has 28%, Eau Claire has 23%, Fond du Lac has 24%. Manitowoc, I wasn't able to get those numbers from them, but I want to note, if you look in 2011 and in 2012, I did get off of their mayor's report for their 2011 and 2012 budget, that in 2011 they transferred $1,048,000 from the reserve into their general fund to help cover taxes. And in 2012, they transferred $1 million from their, um, in 2010 they did, in 2011 they transferred $1 million from their reserves into their tax fund. Now I'm not suggesting we do that. I don't think we should, we should be dipping into our cash reserve fund and have a downward spiral effect um, on our budget process, so I'm not suggesting that. But if you look at Fond du Lac's 24.8, Oshkosh is about 20%, and the Sheboygan County is at about 23%. Now look at, at us. In 2012, this year's budget, using last year's numbers from the, uh, from the audit, is 2011, would be, we'll have a unreserved fund of, and this is from the auditor, 11,545,000, so about 11.5 million, which means, again, is about 32% of our budget. That compares to what those other counties said. So that's why I chose the number 30, is because it's, it's higher than what the, most of our comparables are. It's something that we've strived for and did have done a good job. I give the council credit for the last few years of doing that. If you look at the unreserved balance in 2009 at the bottom of that sheet, it was only seven million. If you look at the balance in 2010, it was nine million. So we added $1.8 million in that year to the reserve fund. And in 2011, at the end of 2011, the start of 2012, we have $11 million. We've added another $1.6 million into that fund. Now, if we were to continue to sock it away, as some aldermen think is a good idea, to just continue to sock it away, in 2012, at the end of this year, because there's an estimated that we ha will have about a $1.2 million surplus at the end of this year, we would have 14 million, 14.7 million, about 42% of our total budget in unreserved fund. Well, I think that's too much. I think we've done a good job in 2009 and 2010, and at the end of 2011, we've had um, 11.5 million. So that means in the last two years, we put away $3.4 million into our unreserved fund from surpluses we had in those years. Well, this year we have a surplus again of estimated, and again, we're not gonna know that number until the end of the year exactly, but it's estimated to be at 1.2 million, and that might be conservative based on we've had higher than that the last two years, and numbers haven't changed much. So, my suggestion is rather than just putting that surplus into of this year, now I'm not touching the unreserved fund. Let me repeat that because in the paper and other things I keep seeing that I want to pull from the unreserved fund to pay for this. That's not what I'm talking about. The unreserved fund is at $11.5 million right now and it should stay there. And that's why if you look on my, my proposal on the, 
on the next page, it says, the general fund under designated fund sh balance shouldn't go below 30%. The second line says, if the general undesignated fund is below 30%, that the common council automatically has to put any funds that are surplus from the year before must go into that designated fund to keep you at least above 30%. What that is going to do is stop the downward spiral that people are worried about that we're going to keep the unreserved fund at the level that we are. And a matter of fact, at the end of this year when you have $1.2 million estimated, you can decide whether to put more money into that fund or less money into that fund, but it's your decision to do that. It will be your decision to do that at the end of the year. That's why I say that if it, if it would suggest to you that if it gets below, these are my suggestions, if it, the balance gets below, that it automatically then that balance has to go to the reserve fund because it's below your standard that you want to keep it at. The undesignated fund balance shouldn't be used, let me repeat again, should not be used for the next year's budgets, meaning taking from the 11.5, unless there's a three quarters vote of the council. So I'm for protecting that fund too. I don't wanna see this spiral down effect that that's, we're worried about. But I'm saying if we're gonna, if you're gonna take, if, and, and why I do that is because maybe there's an emergency that comes up. Maybe there's some good reason to do that, but then you guys will all agree that yes, we should take some money out of that reserve fund for a few years and then build it back up. But that should be a three quarters, major, you know, a, a extreme majority vote to break your own rules. And I'm in favor of that. Next it says, the Common Council should direct the finance director um, to estimate the year's surplus at the end of each year and report to the Finance Committee meeting by November 1st. The Finance Committee must send a recommendation to the Council on fund balances committed to, to, by a resolution no later than the first Council meeting in December. Now why did I say that? Because that's what our, if you turn to the final page, these are observations from our auditor. And the bottom paragraph says, GASB Statement 54 requires that the council take action prior to the fiscal year end to establish any desired fund balance commitments. So that's what I'm asking you to do is when we have a better hold or a better idea, you know, right now we're estimating about a $1.2 million surplus. We'll have a better idea come November because all those, you know, we'll be further in the year with only a month left to go. And we'll have a better idea of what that number really is. And then you as a council should decide out of that 1.5, 1.2 million, 1.5, 1 million, whatever it is, should by resolution say, yeah, let's put a half a million more into the reserve fund. But let's put a half a million more into roads. Or let's put a half a million into this or that. Which brings me to my next recommendation. Let's put a half a million dollars into getting rid of the garbage fee. That's what I'm proposing here is based on the cuts that would be made in, in the 2013 budget would leave us about a $589,000 budget. If we would transfer at the end of the year, which we're re required to do is, have, is uh, to have transfer resolutions from this year's surplus, that would be $589 at this time. Now let's remember, this is a fluid number. We could keep moving that down. We can we keep moving that up. Uh, let's hope that we can work together together and find enough cuts in 2013 that we take none of that money and do it. But at this point, that's where I'm at. Estimated surplus is 2.5 million. 
we take away the 539 that re leaves six hundred and ten thousand dollars that you guys would have to decide outside of my recommendation of the garbage fee six hundred and ten thousand dollars you guys would have to decide what should you want to do with now i've seen in the in i think it was public works came up with a hundred and thirty thousand dollars more for roads i think that's a good idea that's one of the things our constituents are talking about is we need to fix our roads now, we've done a good job, and in, in I believe the budget in 2012 was $50,000. That was up to $100,000, I believe, if I'm not correct, Dave, to $100,000 in 13, which is good. But we're saying, you know, we're behind, and this is a reasonable dollar amount, with talking with the department head, this is a reasonable dollar amount to buy more material that if we have a full crew, because this is the first time for a while we've had a full crew of DPW, that this is the amount of work they could get done next year. Is it, so putting in an extra 130,000 as, as the uh, Public Works committed, I think that's a good idea, so I would recommend doing that. But that still leaves you with $480,000 of this bu budget surplus. Now let's keep saying surplus. This isn't, this isn't budget reserve until you decide to move it. This is surplus of budgeted money from 2012. Now if you decide to take a quarter of a million or you decide to put 480,000 into the surplus, then you'll have over $12 million of surplus, of budget reserves, I'm sorry, of budget reserves. For, but that's your decision. And that's where I'm getting these numbers to, to do that. As I said, I'd like to have the Finance Committee report to you so you can make that decision at the end of the year. Now, the GASB 54 rules, which are long, and please don't all read them, but I, but I have and, and knew what they were talking about from my years in the state. Um, one of the things they say is you don't have to you don't have to give an exact budget amount for the next coming year. You've got to say before the end of the year, you've got to say, we want to transfer budget dollars from 2012's budget into 2000, and, and I'll use the garbage fee because that's what I'm recommending. You can say, we want to transfer $589 or whatever it was, $589,000 into 2013's budget. But you don't have to say that. You can say, we want to transfer from this into th this fund, and later, when, the, uh, when it comes through and we know the exact number, you can fill in those numbers. But you need to have a resolution saying it's your intention to move that money from the past budget into the future's budget, and you can determine those numbers later the exact numbers, you know, you're going to have the numbers from 11 months and an and estimate, but you can move the exact numbers at a later date. That's the way the, the rules are set up. I also have on there that if the general, the last thing, if the general fund balance ever exceeds 45% in one year of the uh, Common Council's, it, let me start again. If the general fund, undesignated fund balance ever exceeds 45% of in one year of your next budget, I would recommend, just like I did earlier, that all that money has to go back to the fund if we're below 30. If we're over 45, I think you should set up a way that over the next three years, you give some of that money back to the taxpayers in budget appropriations for the next three years. Now why would I do that? It's their money. We're collecting money based on our budgets and we've done it for 2010, 2011, and 2012. We've collected the garbage fee, we've collected their taxes, we've collected money based on what we figured our budgets would be. But over the last three years, we've been over budgeted by about a one, and I'm just gonna round off, you've got the figures in front of you, but we've been over budgeting by about a million and a half years, a million and a half years, a million and a half dollars a year. At some point, I think we've gotta look at that and say, it's their money. And we're continuing to over budget 
their money. And if we get to a point where we have 45% of their money, we should then give tax relief back to the people who we collected it from. It's not ours. It's not ours as a city, it's the taxpayers' money. Um, I feel confident that the goal of $1.2 million of excess funds, surplus, as I want to call them, their surplus funds, is going to be true. Because it's been true for the last two years. So I think that's happened. Now let's talk about long-term goals for 2014 and 15. You know, we're going to have some tough budget times in 2014 and 15. If we don't start making some budget cuts or making some long-term budget changes, nothing's going to change. Under my proposal, and it's only a starting point of, again, it's fluid, of the recommendations, we'd be cutting 200 and, what did it say, 280,000, something like that now. Out of that would carry on to cuts in 2014 and would carry on to cuts into 2015. We need to continue to do that. We can't just continue to take our current budget, move it on to the next year, add 2% onto it for employee benefits and wages, add 1% for everything, and think at the end of 14, we're going to be in better shape. At the end of 15, it's correct. We're going to have a budget problem. But we've got built in 6% increases in wages built into the expectations of 2015. We've got built in 3% increases in budget built into the 2014, 13, 14, and 15. We have to do, do a better job of doing what I did in a starting point of actually cutting our expenses and finding ways to either cut expenses or increase our tax base. None of us want to raise taxes. And second of all, the, the, under the state, as Alderman Bourne was reporting, we're under, under the state's revenues. We can't raise taxes only to a point of new, new there's a formula and it's all confusing. And new, constru it, new, construction. new construction times 0.5 times the amount of TIF times 0.5 times 0.2 something or other. Anyways, it, it's a minimal amount that we're able to raise taxes. That's not going to be the answer. The answer is going to be, and, and my budget starts to address it, is we're going to have to make some cuts. We're going to have to make some decisions for 13 and 14. The budget as pr proposed prior to this just chugs along and really doesn't address what to do in 14 or 15. So any questions on that? Any questions for the mayor? <clears throat> None right now, I believe. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm going to hold on the I'm going to hold on the action on this document until after we hear the report from uh, Director Amodio. So let's uh, keep 13 on hold, and then after we hear Mr. Amodio's uh, presentation, uh, we're going to move down to number 14 after that. But next on the agenda, we have item number seven which is a 2012-2013 PowerPoint presentation, budget presentation, <clears throat> as presented to the Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee on June 5th, 2012. There may be some revisions from June 5th, and our Chief Administrative Officer, uh, James Amodio, will do that presentation. Oh. The floor is yours, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> I hope you all received, it was late this afternoon, but copy of the presentation. If not, I believe we can follow along. Um, I also sent you a copy of the, uh, the Moody's report on the city when we borrowed funds uh, earlier this year, the $4.7 million, uh, to express some of their concerns about the city, the strengths and the weaknesses. But to summarize, again, uh, Moody's looked at the city and said, okay, we've got a double A2 rating uh, to us. 
to improve would be great because our cost of borrowing. Excuse me, Jim, could you move the microphone up oh, a little bit? I'm sorry. Thank you. Our cost <coughs> of borrowing money would be cheaper. So it's al we always strive to increase our rating or make it better. At worst case, we try to maintain it so the cost of borrowing doesn't cost us any more in interest expense. <coughs> uh, what would change the ratings up? Uh, substantial expansion of the city, its tax base, and or strengthening of its demographic uh, profile. And I'll get into that in a minute, because that's really the driving factor in a lot of these decisions. Uh, sustained restoration or structural balance to the city's general fund. You have to remember, uh, between Moody's, Standard and & Poor's and Fitch's, they rate every city, municipality, private sector company in the United States. Perception is 90% of the law, in this case 99% because they control destiny for public and private companies when they're looking to finance or borrow money, whether it's to fund working capital or to uh, expand their business. So whatever they perceive your business to be is what the investment community relies on, relies on it on face value, and then determines whether they're going to make an investment in your entity or not. And if those rates that uh, they're investing at are worth the risk for the return they would get. What could change the ratings down? Weakening of the city's tax base and or demographic profile and further deterioration of the city's fund balances and or liquidity, significant unfavorable variances between audited and unaudited fiscal 2011. When we spoke with them, we didn't have the final audit for 11, but we told them what the un unaudited numbers were. And they said if it varies a lot from that on the downside, that could impact the city uh, in an adverse way. But when you look at some of the key statistics that they rely on, especially when it's looking at rating government entities. Our population has decreased by 3% over the last 10 years. The full market valuation is at 2.6 billion, and I'll get to that a little bit later, but that's been declining at half of 1% on average per year. And in fact, the last three years, we've seen 4 to 5% decrease in uh, market valuation. Per capita income is 78% of the uh, U.S. average. Median family income is 88%. The unemployment rate is higher than the state or the, or the uh, U.S. Federal fund balance, as uh, the mayor alluded to, is 33.9%. General fund net cash is 11.1 million or 32%. Debt burden is 3.6% and 2% direct. They look at that ratio because in our tax rate, our full mill rate, there are other taxing entities, and there's overlapping debt based on the percent that we share with them. So for example, we pick up some of the debt from the school system, from the county, LTC, and those kinds of things, even Kohler. So our direct debt is really the debt the city has over its, excuse me, um, total uh, tax base whereas we have to pick up in the overlapping debt uh, all of the other um, taxing entities that are in our tax rate. So that's why it's higher at 3.6%. Our principal amortization uh, in 10 years is actually favorable. Most of our debt expires. 84.5% of it, in fact, expires within 10 years, which is a good thing for the city. If you go to the second page, what I try to... Um, lay out here is assessed values in the city. <clears throat> and you can see that from 2007 through 2013, our assessed values have been pretty flat. Our tax levy has been pretty flat. Our mill rate's been flat. Ergo, we haven't had any increases in taxes uh, in six or seven years. If you flip to the next page, this is where uh, some of the trends start to stick out. This compares assessed value to the state calculated equalized value. I won't pretend to know that I understand everything the state does in coming up with their equalized value. It's also called full value, which is supposed to fairly represent market conditions as of today. 
So it says, for example, if you look at 2009, where we've got an equalized value that's greater than the assessed value, it says that people's homes are undervalued. Conversely, if you skip to 2012, where you've got a, an equalized value that's lower than assessed value, it says you've actually got homes overpriced in your region or your city. And you can see the trend here. Uh, the trend from 2008 at its highest to 2012, we've lost over 14% in equalized value. Um, and our assessed value for the last several years has remained flat. So it says, from a state perspective, once that aggregate gap between assessed value and equalized value is 10% or greater, then that entity needs to go through a full tax reevaluation for assessed values. Right now, uh, in talking with the assessor, um, we've got about an 11% spread on residential and about a 7.5% spread roughly on commercial. Manufacturing is pretty, the state actually does manufacturing, so that doesn't count in the equation. So we're roughly at 8 to 8.5% 8 um, assessed value greater than equalized value. So it says that in the next several years, the city will have to look at a full reevaluation. Now, all things being equal, it says that if everybody's homes were overvalued by 10%, if everybody's values drop by 10%, everybody's taxes would relatively stay the same. The only thing that would happen would be the mill rate would actually increase, but because the assessed value went down, in theory, it would stay the same. But there are pockets in the city uh, that have some assessments that are over 100% and some that are lower. So that when we go through and do, do that reassessment, there, were, there, were people, there will be people that will be adversely affected by these changes. Conversely, there will be some that will benefit because, in fact, maybe they're paying too much tax as it stands today based on their assessed value. The last time we did a reevaluation was in 2005. Um, we talked about this at budget time. Um, and thought that, you know, if values held uh, from an equalized standpoint that we could probably look at assessing or, or doing a reevaluation in two to three years. Um, our equalized value this year, based on preliminary estimates that were released late yesterday, showed the city dropped about $109 million in equalized value uh, in 12 over 11. So it puts that spread closer to 10%, which says there may be something we might have to do in the near term. The last time we did an assessment in 2005, as I mentioned, we had six people in the assessor's office, and we spent sixty dollars to $70,000 in outside services for a lot of the modeling that needed to be done in our different districts. Today we have four people in the assessor's office, and when we looked at this last year uh, to get some kind of price estimate, from a third party to support the four people we have in the assessor's office would be closer to $200,000 range to have a full assessment done with outside consulting help uh, for the city. Um, not sure where 13 is going to end up, but the trend is certainly there. The overall decrease uh, in equalized values was 6% for the city. Uh, the normal decrease in the county was 4 but because we're heavily populated with condominiums, which have taken extreme hits in the last several years, uh, we were at the 6% level uh, due to that. I believe that it will continue, at least in 13. We'll probably see another drop closer to the $100 million level, and that will trigger an event with the state that we'll have to do. When it triggers the event, uh, the state notifies the city. Uh, the city has two years to comply. So it says, if in fact it was triggered in 13, we'd have till 15 to comply. But again, we'd have to look at budgeting those funds to get that assessment done. I'm not recommending that we do it, um, but when we do it, uh, there will be an impact. And if we wanted to start, for example, to have 14 as our baseline to bring the assessed value more in line with the equalized value, 
we'd probably have to start in the fall of 2013 so that we could have those new assessments on the books by January of 2014, just for information. The next one is uh, a breakdown of the city tax levy. And as you know, we have $21,184,000 that we divvy out between really four entities. One is the general fund, second is the library, the third is the debt service uh, for the money that the city borrows, and the fourth is transit. And you can see uh, how the percentages have tweaked a little over the years uh, from 2008 through 2012. One of the other key things I'll point out here one of the things that we have to do <clears throat> in order to keep the general fund where it's at, because that's really where we had the funding problems, <clears throat> excuse me, is the percentage of debt service. So we look at that every year and look forward three or four years to look at the debt service that's going to be retired and or paid down. And that's what gives the city the flexibility, flexibility to borrow new money. So as we can keep the debt service payments to about 13.6 or 7 percent every year, it doesn't impact the general fund. Because if we were to go out and borrow more money, that debt service percentage would have to go up. And it either means we'd give less money to the general fund, the library, or transit. And those are really policy decisions that the council would have to make. So when I get a little further into the presentation and talk about money we have to borrow and look at our ability to borrow money, that's what I'm basing it on, keeping that levy to support a debt service payment of 13.7 percent. Let's talk about fund balances for a minute, and this just goes and looks at 2007 through 2011 and where some of the fund balances have changed. We'll talk about this a little bit later, but you can see the motor vehicle fund has dropped from a little over $8 million uh, and in 2011, it's just around 2.2 million. So we've had a depletion of funds there for a number of reasons. Health insurance fund was in a lot of trouble, uh, but it's come back uh, and we're at a position now where probably through this year we'll be at a proper reserve balance in, that in the uh, health insurance fund uh, for claims. Workers' compensation, we've gotten worse. Um, due to some claims. We had some bad loss years. Um, we really didn't charge back departments for the real cost of claims. We started that in 2012, and it jumped from about $100,000, which is really the cost of the premiums, to about $384,000. And you'll see in 13 that we actually increased it by another $130,000 based on claims that are in the pipeline and based on what our workers' comp people tell us that we need to have reserved for claim payouts in 2013. And you can see the general fund balance was around $12 million in seven, and currently it's at 11.5 million. Took a look at headcount. Uh, that's always an issue on what the city has done. We went back to 2000 and looked at headcount in administration, which is primarily city hall, police, fire, and public works. And you can see that since 2000, uh, we've roughly taken 20% of employees out of the city. Since 2006, we've reduced it by almost 12%. Since 2005, almost 5%. In between 12 and 13, we've taken further reductions of about 2% in headcount. When we look at the general fund and look at uh, the balances in the general fund and the sources and uses that we've used money. You can see between 2005 and 2011, the actual excess revenues over expenses for those years. And you can see in five and six that we're slightly positive. Seven, eight, nine, 10, and 11, it was budgeted to use general fund surplus to fund the expense budget without the help of other financing sources. Now, when you take into consideration other financing sources, it brings in revenues you can see in those amounts for those years. So when you add those two together, it says that we've actually been favorable in 2005 and 6 uh, to general fund, 
by 1.4 million and 1.2 million. In 2007, we actually used $2 million of general fund reserves. 2.8, we used 3.3. 2.9, we used 1.4. Just about broke even in 10 and added a million dollar surplus in 11. And when Moody's talks about the general fund deficits that we need to recover from, they see these numbers and they've seen the use of general fund reserves and they believe with the debt structure we have and the demographics that we have that it's important that that trend be reversed and that we start building general fund reserve surpluses to offset the general fund demogra or the city's demographics. So in total, we've actually used $2.763 million of general fund reserves from 2005 through 2011. These are right out of the audit financial statements in case anybody would like to look at them. Expenses in the general fund. If you look at, and it's pretty tough to tell here, but uh, when you look at 12 and 13, it says general government is slightly down. Police department is slightly up, and it's slightly up, uh, as we talked about the other night in uh, PPNS, is that uh, we made a conscious decision in 12 not to put money in for squad cars to try to extend the life, uh, but we need to put those back in, so that was roughly $160,000 that we added to the expense budget in 13 to start back a replacement of squad cars in the police department. Fire department is actually slightly under in 13 to 12, and public works is slightly over. Now these, these figures have not been changed based on where we currently stand, based on documents that were submitted and, and passed in the finance meeting, but based on the original budget submission. And if anything, they might change slightly downward with the exception of public works where we added roughly another $130,000 for materials to do infrastructure repairs. I won't take a lot of time uh, on 12 and 13, but the key statistic here is in 12 and in 13, if you look at what is called the operating costs, that, represent, that represents 20% of the city's budget. Those are all the non-payroll related costs. So when you look at salary and fringes for all of our employees, they're roughly 80% of the city's budget. So if we really need to make systemic changes in the city, we need to further reduce headcount. That's the only way we can do it. Just as an aside, when we put together the guidelines for the 2012 budget, based on what the council had recommended, was to have a 13 budget that was no greater than the 12, basically a zero-based budget. So that's what we went off and tried to accomplish. And when we looked at the 13's budget, and going back to 12, 2012's budget was $35.6 million. It's not up on that slide. I'm just uh, speaking from some other numbers uh, that I have written down. The 2012 budget, when I adjusted them for events, one-time events that were either positive or negative, and even with a 2.5% wage increase at the time, uh, we were negotiating contracts uh, with the unions for the employees that would still be represented. We came down uh, to thirty-five million one hundred eighty thousand dollars, which would be the number that we would try to hit in the 13 budget. When the 13 budget was originally submitted, we had $34.8 million, uh, so we met that. And after we've gone through the Finance Committee recommendations and all, all of what the subcommittees have recommended, we're currently at $35,181,000. So I believe we met that opportunity and really offset a large uh, substantial cost for escalation in the city's budget, primarily driven by salary increases and related fringe benefits. Uh, Jim, if I could ask a quick question. Uh, <clears throat> your fringe benefits for 2012 were 26.76. Do you recall before, before the uh, Act 10 what we were in 11 for fringes? It was, it was probably about $700,000 higher, Jim, just off the top. That's what, that's what I thought. So we didn't have the benefit yet so of... Percentage-wise, uh, 
are we up around 30 percent on fringes but now right for 13 we're going to be down at about 25 almost 26 percent correct okay yeah. thank you and you can see i guess on, on the second page on fringes for 13 there's an early retirement incentive that we won't have to pay any longer there's retiree health insurance that will expire and then there's the uh Workers, the uh, retirement of $222,000, Wisconsin retirement. Offsetting that, as I spoke earlier, we had to increase workers' comp insurance by $130,000. So that's the, the fringe roll-up between 12 and 13. If you go to the next page, this is a summary. Um, we talked about this last night in finance, but this is where we've ended up in the 13 budget so far. We started out with $34.8 million as a budget. We made some changes uh, in the city attorney for $95. Uh, municipal court, uh, we made some adjustments. Public works, we, we spoke about adding materials. Uh, PP&S, which met the other night, we took their recommendations. There's actually an increase in revenue and a de an increase in expenses net-net. And that was a swap between the ambulance fund, which actually dropped expenses and increased the expenses in the fire department. But based on the contribution the ambulance fund would make, they would be pretty much net zero. Uh, we estimated um, TID-3, uh, which was new to the budget, and the benefit of about $200,000 in revenue. And we estimated um, the anticipated changes for WRS percentages and they ranged between 180 and 240,000, and we picked a middle of the road at 210 to say that might be the impact. So when we roll those numbers up, it said we ended up having a shortfall of $147,000 to the budget. Um, in, in talking with Don, um, uh, we, we decided to present a balanced budget tonight. Um, the recommendations that we used is and I'll go through the mayor's list in a minute, just some of the highlights. Um, but uh, the total mayoral list of $280,000 we came up with, and this is after talking to all department heads, um, about $46,000 worth of savings. Uh, some were picked up in PP&S. The balance would be the $25,000 in ambulance revenue less the uh, $14,000 in expense offset. And in the 2013 budget, as you recall, we had to pay a $250,000 fee for dredging this year. We had $100,000 budgeted in 2012, and uh, we came to the council to say, we'll take it out of general fund reserves, put it back in the budget for 13 to make up those general fund reserves. So it's, it's uh, our opinion, at least myself and uh, Don's, that uh, we ought to not budget refunding the reserve balance for $108,000 to balance the budget. Uh, in 2013. So that would be a savings on the cost side. So that puts our budget at $35,058,616. Um, trying to roll forward just to, at a 20,000 foot level, look at 14 and 15. Under the current law, we're able to increase our levy by one half of 1%. Um, or net new construction, and we still have to figure out what net new construction was for 11 to see what that might be. But if we just do half of 1% of our current levy, that means that we can increase it by $105,000. So I've put that on the revenue side. Offsetting that on the expense side is an estimate of 1.5% on total costs in the general fund. So let's back up for a minute. What's that 1.5% mean? Currently, we've negotiated contracts with two of our unions, which represent half of the general fund employees, for 2.5% a year over the next three years. We've actually put in this proposal an estimated 2% increase for the other half of the population in the general fund. So when you put those two together, it says we probably got a 2.25% increase in the general fund for raises, half contractual, half not. 
And then based on the fringe benefits we'd have to add on that, assuming no additional cost for WRS, we'd be roughly at the 2.5% mark, all in on wages and fringes. So by budgeting 1.5% overall, it means that we would have to, in that budget cycle, take 1% out of the 20% of non-payroll related costs. So that's the assumption that's in this budget by assuming a 1.5% increase. Baked in is 2.5% for wages and fringes and a negative 1% for non-payroll related costs. So that's not an easy push. So that says that with the garbage fee in the revenue for 2014, we'd have a $420,000 problem. If we just assume we roll that to 15 and we add in another half of 1%, we take out the garbage fee because it sunsets, and we add another 1.5%, the same as we did in 14, it says the problem we would face in 15 would be $1.7 million uh, of a shortfall in the general fund expenses over revenue. So as you can see, this compounds as we have to increase the cost of doing business. We have to provide wages contractually uh, and actually provide wage increases for the other population of the city and the associated fringes. It adds roughly two to two and a half percent a year. So we would need to look at alternative sources or increasing the revenue base by at least that much to maintain uh, a level position going into each year. I believe Alderman Van Akron has a question. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I guess just a question on the escalation side of things. Um, as you stated, a lot of that comes from the contractual 1.5% and then the not contractual 2% raises. So if I'm reading you right, we're talking about 6% in contractual and non contractual escalation over the next three years? 0.25 a year. Okay, so almost 7% in raise increases over the next three years. Correct. I guess I struggle with the, the policy making side of that because I don't think that's something that this council or, or this body certainly has endorsed or... Well, I believe they've endorsed the contractual side. Well, I, I, I would agree with the 1.5% the, the that I would agree with. Well, no, they with, got 2.5% on an annualized basis. Okay. Police and fire. And we have transit up for negotiation this year. Right. So like it says if you're going to give police and fire 2.5%, what do you do for the other 180 people in the general fund? And, and I guess Zero. That's, that's my question is, is when we build those escalations in there, I, I quickly see how we get to the, the shortfall side. And, and I guess that's part of my concern is, is obviously as we go down that road, if we don't make the systemic changes, whether it be cuts personnel-wise or to that 20% material-wise, um, right. That, that's the road we're going to go down, and, and I agree it's going to be a hard decision, but those are the decisions that have to be made. I don't think we can just continually roll in those changes. Though. For illustration purposes, that's what's in front of us, so it's very difficult for me to sit here and look down at 13 and say, let's patch the problem when 14 and 15 are even greater. Thank you, Alderman Van Akron. Alderperson Donahue. Um, and Jim, uh, I think it was slide seven, uh, the general fund budget versus actual. The middle column was actual other funding or financing sources uh, that were positive from 2009 through 2011. Can you just, what Alder, are those? Alderperson Donahue, what page are you on? Seven. It's slide seven. seven. Thank you. I, I've got a sheet somewhere in this folder, but a lot of it, first of all, the biggest payment is a payment in lieu of tax from the water utility. It was probably six or 700,000 back in 2005. 2011, it was 940,000 of that 2.6 million. There are some sales of land that are in there, uh, depending on what land we sell that we take in and other sources and uses. Uh, and I've got a full list that I can actually uh, go through or send you if you would like. And in 14 and 15, would those sources likely appear again? Yes. Okay. Yes. Right. Nancy, uh, I don't know if you've got more that you can add to that, but. 
inter fund transfers that we use, um, where general funds owed some money from other funds, and when the other funds, other special revenue funds have the money, it gets transferred to the general fund, so it gets picked up that way. Okay. Um, and then I, d I did kind of lose you <laughs> um, a little bit in the discussion in the, the slide that, that is up now that I don't think is in our, pa or at least was not in my uh, packet. Um, what are non-payable related costs? That's actually not the right slide. That was a slide from the first presentation. Oh, okay. Um, I can be happy to go through it with you. What was the question? I'm sorry. Well, I was interested in what a non-payable related cost was and what impact that had on your projected deficits. Non-payroll related costs? I just wrote it down as non-payable related costs. Right. That's I was all actually following you quite a, okay. pretty well uh, <laughs> uh, that's, up to until about that point. You know, 80% of the department's budgets are, are people that's and no. benefits. Mm -hmm. The rest is like in public works, all the materials and supplies they need, tipping mm -hmm. fees and those kinds of things. Uh, when you look in other people's department budgets, it could be for maintenance contracts, you know, um, Outside services, as an example, that we would use and have used in the city. So those are non-payroll related costs. Um, I didn't bring, I didn't oh, bring my just, budget book just up. Just moving on. Um, and I appreciate uh, very much the look at 14 and 15. Um, would you characterize this as a, a worst case scenario? Um, you know, middle, high, low? Um, well, de depending what the services we presently have today and the contracts we have today that are set in place, that's pretty close. Okay. Very close. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, Alder Person Donahue. Any, any other questions? Um, the next side is the capital requirements. I don't know if you took a look at that in the, in the handout, or not the handout, but the uh, information I sent you today. And that showed um, capital requirements for 13, 14, and 15. Um, I'll go through them briefly. When I look at general capital that we borrow, or normally borrow $2 million a year for, which includes sidewalk repair, mini storm sewers, playground renovations, and there's other things in there like radio upgrades, uh, south business drive upgrades that we're going to have to provide next year because we've got the county doing part of south business drive and the city has to contribute some of that work. Um, there's riverfront docks uh, and those kinds of things we spend $2 million a year on. And as you remember, we borrowed $2 million this year for those things at a capital committee meeting. We decided to spend $1.35 million of that, hold the rest for other projects, even though they were lined up, to see if we could extend that, the use of that money. Um, next year, the 2.7 million we borrowed is all for Eisner Avenue. So there is no general fund money to do stuff. But we've got stuff to do next year for sidewalks, mini storms, playgrounds, South Business Drive, maybe riverfront docks to the tune of 765,000. When we look at 14, it's about 1.1 million. The big change there is really we've got a radio upgrade. We keep talking about combined dispatch and the city's portion of those radios for police and fire, as we estimate it today, is about $450,000. And then in 2015, it's pretty sketchy, only because we don't go out that far really, but we've got sidewalk repair, mini storms, and playgrounds for about 265,000. So for normal stuff, we need to borrow two, $2 million 143 over the next three years. And the key in there is that there are no road resurfacing programs. That's bare bones borrowing, okay? When you look at the fire department's needs, and in years past, what we used to do is budget hundred to $200,000 a year in their budgets, accumulate that over three or four years, and when they needed to buy fire apparatus, the money was there. We stopped that when 2008, I believe, when budgets got tight in the general fund, 
so we stripped out that capital, if you will. So we haven't provided any capital in reserve to buy, or, to buy fire equipment. And the chief's actually pushed out a year longer than he probably should, but he's got a need in 14 for a pumper truck and a command vehicle. And in 15, he's got a need for a ladder truck, if that's what we have to do, and can't come up with maybe a shared service kind of deal on ladder trucks within the county. That's $900,000. Let's talk about the motor vehicle fund for a minute. We've talked about that. You saw how the fund's gotten depleted. Um, it's gone from roughly $8 million to $2.2 million. This year, uh, we've got scheduled to buy two tandem axle dumps that are roughly $400,000 out of a fleet of six, Dave, that we bought all six in, what, 1995? So they're high mileage one owner beauties that need to, to be replaced. That's what we do with all of our road work. Those trucks support that. And we bought the leaf sucking equipment for roughly $90,000, $100,000. Assuming that the, that the expense and revenue in that fund would stay equal this year uh, because of a light winter um, and light usage and repairs have been pretty good. Um, that would be a depletion of $500,000 this year on $2.2 million. So we'd, we would start 2013 with $1.7 million. Now that general, that motor vehicle fund gets funded in the past to buy vehicles from the general fund. The general fund would rent or pay rental to the motor vehicle fund for the use of those vehicles and it would be twice the replacement cost plus an estimate for repairs and maintenance and, and fuel consumption. And that revenue was charged to the general fund, and, and it also covered the gasoline, the repairs, and six mechanics. So that fund over time built up money because of the charges to the general fund. With the pressures on the general fund, those charges have been curtailed to the point where in 2010, 11, and 12, the general fund can only support $1.7 million of charges. And the current motor vehicle fund to run it with the employees, the mechanics, the estimated repairs, and the gas is $2 million. So that fund has been using it's fund equity just to fund the maintenance and gas for the trucks. Because again, the general fund can't afford anymore to pay two times that like it used to in the past. So it says that looking forward, there will not only be a drain on that $1.7 million that's left for vehicle purchases, but also a drain for that cost to maintain versus the rental that the general fund can provide. So in my, in my estimate, based on several revisions with David uh, and his guys, we need to spend roughly $950,000 for new equipment in 2013, of which half a million dollars roughly, roughly is for two new garbage trucks. And I'm estimating that we'll use fund equity to support the operations of $200,000. So that will leave us a balance in that fund at the end of 13 of 550000 David's requirements for 14 are $1.5 million for equipment. And of that, again, there's two more garbage trucks in there for a half a million bucks. $200,000 of equity applied. We would be in the hole $1.2 million in 14. So at the end of 14, you'd have to question whether you continue to f keep the motor vehicle fund in existence and rather just fold it into the general fund like it used to be a long time ago. His requirements in 2015 are $1.3 million, another $200,000 of usage, so we would be negative to the tune of a million and a half dollars uh, in 2015. We have a land acquisition in 2014 we have to pay for, which is a Shukert property. That's $2 million. So when you look at 13, 14, and 15, it says the city needs to borrow $8.3 million based on what I just explained. 
It's got the capacity to borrow $4 million, $2 million in 14 and $2 million in 15, as I pointed out earlier, to keep the levy percentage the same for debt so it didn't impact the general fund, which would be an additional burden. So we have in front of us now an issue that if we need to fund trucks or equipment, we're going to have to borrow it out of go debt. No longer will we have in 14 or 15 motor vehicle fund revenue to pay for that debt. So that has to be incorporated in our borrowing. And we really have to decide on how we're going to spend the money. But the key thing in this, and I can't say it enough, is we know that our infrastructure needs a lot of work. And in those three years, an $8.3 million of capital, there's no roads. There's only the roads that can be repaired that David has in his budget. The last thing that's the uh, Excuse me, uh, Jim. Uh, Alderman Kath. Thank you, Chairman. On the $2 million, $2 million for the sugar property, do we also have to pay back the down payment? There was a down payment on that land? Yeah, that came out of the Industrial Park Fund. The intent would be to pay that back. Okay. I mean, depending on what we wanted to do, you know, the, the intent there was to set up a TID, get infrastructure in there, take the purchase of the land, get it in, have the TID based on increments, pay for that over time. I've got one, Jim. <clears throat> you said we're going to have to have the discussion whether we continue the motor vehicle fund or just take that out of the general fund. I guess I see the advantage of continuing the motor vehicle fund and maybe having to make some adjustments, adjustments to the formula, which we talked about last time at the public works meeting. But I guess the advantage of keeping the motor vehicle fund is you're putting money in there out of the general fund uh, on a consistent basis so that when we have a year where we've got a lot of expenses, uh, as in the past, the money, it got up there to $8 million. Now it's, it's way down there. But I guess the advantage to keeping that over just going to the general fund without the motor vehicle fund is that on a year when you've got three or four million dollars of capital improvements or vehicle purchases, you've got a choice of either raising the levy or borrowing the money. Is that what it comes down to? Correct. And I, I guess I would have a concern with possibly doing away with the uh, motor, motor vehicle fund for that reason because it kind of smooths it out over the years if you have a respectable balance in there rather than having to either borrow money or take a, a big hit on, the, hit on the general fund one year? Well, it wouldn't be a big hit, Jim, because the general fund pays $1.7 million today. The cost to run the motor vehicle fund is $1.9 million mm -hmm. without purchase of new vehicles. Mm -hmm. So regardless of whether we rolled it into the general fund or kept it separate, somebody would have to fund the differential of the $200,000 on a go-forward basis. Mm -hmm. So by folding it back into the general fund, you have the same impact of $200,000. Okay. Alderman Hammond. Thank you. I think one of the things that, uh, you know, just as a point of clarification, I guess, you know, when we talk about that debt levy, that 13.7, and the impact on the general fund of that, that's interest cost. You know, when we go above that 13.7, for example, we start, instead of bonding $2 million a year, we bond $4 million a year. That extra interest cost comes out of the general fund, which means it has to be replaced with something. Something has to give in order to compensate for that additional interest cost. So what Jim was alluding to there is if we go to 16% of debt, something's going to have to give to cover the interest cost um, that we're going to accrue because of that, or the additional interest cost that we're going to accrue because of that. Um, and so that's why we're trying to maintain that debt level at about 13.7. Additionally, if we increase the debt level, again, you know, I hate to keep pounding on this Moody's thing, but um, you know, it's fairly significant and important. If we go above that 13.7, now, again, our debt ratios start to look um, a little bit uh, less, less positive. Um, I don't want to say negative, but they don't look as good. Um, and that could impact our rating um, as we go forward as well. Because keep in mind, 2014, you know, we're going to go through this Moody's thing again. Um, and uh, as we go out to bond for 14, because we've bonded already for 12 and 13. Yeah, and one of the keys there, because we asked Ehlers, because they do a lot of this uh, 
uh, fundraising for municipalities across the state. And when, it lo when you look at ratings, whether <coughs> ratings go up or down, it normally costs you 15 to 20 basis points um, in cost of money. So for example, if we borrowed money at 2% and our bond rating dropped to AA3, we would be looking at 2.4% cost of money rather than 2%. And that's significant on the amount of money we borrow um, as a city. So it's, you know, a 15 to 20% increase in the interest expense. This, this last slide is just an example of what demographics do. And I used a pretty dumb example um, last night, I believe, or a pretty good one. But if you look at the city of Middleton, Middleton's got a double A1 rating. It's got a population of 17,000 people, which is a third of what we have. It's got an equalized value of $2.7 million, and ours is at 2.6. So for a third of the population, they have more in equalized value than the city does. If you look at their per capita income as compared to the state, they're 154% of the state. If you look at what their general fund reserve balance is, it's 1.2%. 1.2. What's that tell you? What it tells you is, is because their demographics are so strong, the general fund reserve balance doesn't enter into the rating by Moody's. Because the city is so strong, it generates a ton of revenue. So when we look at ours as an example, we're at 80% of the state on a per capita basis. And we talked about the demographics which are dropping, whether it's population, unemployment, or equalized value. So what Moody looks at is the stability of the general fund and the general fund reserves because you don't have the other demographics that offset that. And that's why it's so important that our general fund reserve balance be as large as we can sustain to help that. And in addition, at least in my opinion, is that if we do have excess funds, we use them to improve infrastructure and not fund deficits in the budget because that's a death spiral. Once we start funding normal operating costs from general fund reserves, and if any of you have had any experience in the private sector, I've had 40 years, <clears throat> there comes a point very soon down the road where you shut the lights and walk away because you, you can't sustain that. So the important factor here is to understand that we've got capital spending that we have issues with because we can't fully fund it. If we do, it will affect the general fund. We've got contractual deficits out in 14 and 15, and with the sunset of the garbage fee, creates a very large hole in 15 that we have to deal with starting today going forward to come up with some plan, a vision as it was called, to say strategically where are we going to go because we need to deal with this problem um, firsthand. The only other comments I'll make, and, and again, I'm not going to go through any line item detail. I applaud the mayor for going through all of the infinite detail he did. Um, one comment would be that he did it kind of in a vacuum. <laughs> Uh, didn't sit with department heads the second go around. I did uh, sit with department heads and we talked about all of these reductions. I think of the 200 and the, at least the list I had from uh, the last strategic fiscal planning meeting, which was $282,000, we came up with roughly $46,000 of recommended cuts off that list. Some of the bigger ones, and again, not knowing the full impacts of the financial systems or how funds work in between each other. Let's look at a big one, which is vehicle rental. Vehicle rental in the Parks Department. It's $50,000 as a recommended cut. I think I just got through talking about the Motor Vehicle Fund gets its revenue from the general fund. 
And if we cut this $50,000, we would actually bring a closer end to the motor vehicle fund than we currently have projected. <coughs> so that goes to fund the motor vehicle. Um, tipping fees, a $25,000 reduction, and basically we've got a 3% price increase in 13, as well as it's indexed to diesel fuel, which has been on the increase. Again, related to commodities um, and commodity pricing and, and what the weather uh, provides. Contractual services and public works. Uh, one of the things there is uh, the garbage fee that we're being charged by the water utility. As it turns out, we budgeted 40. We had $60,000 charged through June. Uh, I can't recommend cutting 20, 20 or 15,000 out of that budget when I know I'm 20 grand over already. Uh, so that's a problem. A couple of the other ones were there were some recommendations, I believe, in uh, the fire department, the police department, to cut overtime. Um, in 2011, with a higher budget for the entire department, on 425,000, I believe, we overran overtime by $20,000. In 2012, we cut the budget by $20,000 in, in trying to manage it. But based on what we see year to date through June, we're going to be over about another $20,000 in total. The biggest part of the, not problem, but the overtime usage is in patrol. Uh, there were recommended cuts in every department other than patrol, and patrol was left out. But that's been the department that's overrun it. So the recommendation at committee the other night was to leave the budget intact. So it's very difficult to make cuts in departments without looking at the entire police department. And that's made up of five or six departments. So there are some things that, again, on the surface look good, but as you peel the onion, don't appear to be. We've got other things, and I won't go through all of them, where there are timing events, where you know we had people that weren't there last year but are going to be there this year. So travel, training, other related expenses uh, will come up. I know one was contracted services uh, that we had in this building, City Hall. This is the first year we've gone to outside cleaning services. In the past, we had a full-time person and part-time people. And when it came to waxing floors, shampooing rugs, part-time people filled in and we kind of got it done. Mainly not through overtime or contracted services. This year we're going to have to contract that. That's not part of our set contract for cleaning, but we're going to have to contract that out so that we have the carpet shampooed and or the floors waxed or scrubbed. So that's a piece that we would have to spend probably towards the end of the year rather than now. But it appears based on cost to date, we're under running. True statement, but not knowing what's coming up, it's difficult to say we should take those as cuts. So that's just an overview of some of those. But again, we've gone through these with all the departments. So if there are any questions or the mayor has any questions, um, we can certainly go through them. Any other questions? I just, I just want to make a couple comments. Uh, I guess we're going to have to talk about this sooner or later. Uh, the reason why we have the garbage fee in the first place is that when we were doing the 2012 budget, we had a number of things on the table, Outsource, outsourcing garbage, doing some things with the, with the fire department, doing some things with the library. And I don't remember if we had any, we were talking about anything with the police department combined dispatch. Uh, the reason why we have the garbage fee is that last year's council was not willing to take on the elephants in the room, the big ticket items, and I, I really appreciate all of the work that the mayor has done to come up with $279,624, but that doesn't come close to over $800,000 that the garbage fee is providing. And in my opinion of listening to the mayor's presentation and now uh, Mr. Amodio's presentation, is that we're not willing to do, to take on the elephants in the room as far as the budget, the big ticket items, again for 2013. <clears throat> and I wonder if the council, we're not willing, apparently we're not willing to do anything with the fire department, the library, the police department, or 
we know all we know all of the, the elephants in the room that are causing the problem and we're going to pass this budget we may to continue the garbage fee and i just wonder if next year's council is going to have the courage to take on those same elephants in the room we all know what they are to try to do away with the garbage fee and it's going to sunset after 14 what is the council going to do then are we going to extend the garbage fee are we going to raise taxes if we can i think you know before we finish up this 2013 budget i think we also have to have the discussion are we going to have the courage to take on the big ticket items for 13 and i haven't seen any indication either at strategic fiscal planning or finance or any of these two presentations tonight that we're willing to take on those big ticket items and if we don't do that then the garbage fee is, is just going to continue so I, I i wonder if anybody else has any comments on on possibly we have to take a look at some of the big ticket items alderman hammond thank you i'll comment on that um, as many of you know also as part of the garbage fee and the reason it was set to sunset in 2014 um, was to give us a period of time again keeping in mind last year we were right up against the 11th hour <clears throat> we started the budget process early this year the idea was put the budget to bed and start working on putting an action plan together this fall and spring so it could be executed next year and into 2014 so that by 2015 we'd have the things in place um, to not have to necessarily worry about it now whether it's the fire department um, the library um, the police department um, getting rid of garbage you know all of those things need to be thought out a little bit longer than two weeks before the county says we have to have a budget there so yes the garbage fee was set to sunset and the idea is that we should be looking forward right now not rehashing the same arguments um, that we did last November um, and as I talked to Alderman Bourne on the phone earlier today you know my goal would be as soon as the budget's put together to call a strategic fiscal planning meeting um, and hopefully those that aren't on the committee would be part of the process um, not leave it up to just the five of us and start working through that plan and have something uh, concrete by next spring so that it can start to be executed in 2013 and 2014 whether that you know for example closing a fire station and building a new one all those things take time so if we're going to do those things um, we need to get working on them now um, so uh, you know from my standpoint we need to be starting working on that stuff today or as soon as we can put this to bed um, knowing that we're not going to be able to do anything drastic in 2013. thank you next we're going to move on to item number 14 we'll hold off uh any uh any vote on number seven we'll go to number 14 and that is council document number 6.10 from july 16th of 2012 resolution number 4312-13 a resolution repealing uh, resolution number 128-11-12 relating to ratifying and implementing a special charge for garbage and refuse disposal services provided by the city and I believe the author of that uh, document was Alderman Decker did you want to make any comments on your document Alderman Decker sure yeah just briefly um, I brought this forward very general so that we could basically use it as a stepping stone um, I talked to a lot of different older persons there's been a lot of different uh, ideas um, I think uh, I think uh, what we need to do is use this as a guideline that will move us forward. We could then. Uh, <coughs> I'm sorry. You have to come back to me, please. Okay, uh, Alderman Matichek, you were a co-sponsor of that document. Did you have any suggestions on how to repeal the garbage fee? I think the mayor laid out a pretty uh, great uh, framework for ideas uh, on ways to uh, cut and fulfill the gap that would be caused by the repeal. Anything else, Alderman Decker? Okay. Uh, Alderman Van Akron. 
Thank you. I believe we talked at strategic fiscal, um, and, and Alderman Decker laid out at that point that part of the, uh, or at least he claimed part of his intentions were to that uh, because on our books now we have a garbage fee that has to be there, if there is going to be any idea to eliminate the garbage fee, there would have to be a resolution to start that process. Um, he, he did indicate at that meeting that that was what the resolution was for, so that that conversation could be had. Thank you, Alderman Van Akron. Uh, Alderman Reisler, you're next. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, as I spoke last night at finance, I, I guess I'm not for handcuffing the, the next committee, um, no matter who that may be, or the next council, into not having the garbage fee. Um, I don't want the garbage fee any more than anybody else does. Um, but again, I don't want to handcuff the next um, council. I guess one of the other things that came to mind um, in the mayor's presentation and also in Mr. Modio's is we have the ability after we hopefully pass the budget, um, to look at um, the excess revenue uh, in November that is available and decide where it's going to go at that time. So I guess even um, by not um, supporting this, I'm, I'm still hopeful that we will have um, some better financial numbers in November saying how much money is, is projected in excess for 2012. And from there, we can decide if 130 goes to public works, or if we want to put some of the money towards the garbage fee and reduce it down somewhat, um, or if we want to continue with it. But I think we have that, I don't want to say second uh, kick at the cat then, but we can always look at doing um, some with that at that point in time. And, that, and that's for our decision, and we'll know better financially how we are uh, at the end of the year. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Reisler. Uh, Alderman Carlson, you're next. Thank you, Chairman. I guess just to touch on a few things um, in regards to what Alderman Van Akron said, this, um, this discussion on, on what we're going to do budget-wise um, budget started a few months ago. This resolution, in effect, ends the garbage feed. No questions asked. It ends it. The word repeal is in there. The discussion about how we're going to fix our budget problem started months ago. This would just cause even more problems. Uh, after listening to the mayor's proposals, um, the chief, uh, chief administrator's proposals, and the the second budget review, I, I guess you could say in terms of the savings or lack of savings that, uh, that are present, and after hearing Alderman Hammond here and the lack of answers from the two authors of, of this resolution, I make a motion to file. Second. We have a motion and a second to file uh, agenda item number 14. Uh, is there any further discussion? I do have a light here. Alderman Bellinger, did you want to speak to that or something else? Um, I'll speak to that. Okay, go ahead. Thank you, Chairman. Um, the first, first of all, I'd like to thank the mayor for the due diligence and the work that he put through. He obviously went through uh, a lot of time and effort, and a lot of what the information was was very uh, um, enlightening and good. Um, and he painted a um, uh, a pretty nice picture. But uh, when uh, Administrator Modio gave his presentation, things didn't look as bright. <laughs> when you look at the future expenditures that, uh, that the city is uh, faced with. And based on that, and uh, even if um, the mayor's suggestion of $270,000, $280,000 of savings that he came up with, and he said it is a fluid number, um, if, even if those do hold true, and it's not forty dollars or 50000 like Mr. Modio says, um, we're still five hundred, six hundred thousand dollars $600,000 short. And he wants to take that from a surplus. And when we've got all these other future um, expenditures coming up and use that, the following year, that surplus doesn't automatically carry over. There's no guarantee that there's going to be a surplus year after year after year. Um, I, I wish there was, uh, you know, and we could fund all our projects through our surpluses. But nobody can forecast that. And for that reason, I cannot support using that surplus money to get rid of the garbage fee. And I, as a taxpayer, and when I ran for alderman, I ran against the garbage fee. I can't stand the garbage fee. But in light of what's going on with our fiscal situation, I can't in good conscience um, support taking the surplus and, and using it in that fashion. Um, I like what um, Alderman Hammond had to say about looking at some of the bigger ticket issues. Um, my only disagreement is I would like to look at some of them sooner than what you would like to look at them. I realize that um, closing a fire station and building a new one can't be done 
you know, in three months, but there are some other issues. We had a citizen speak to us earlier about um, possibly looking at um, privatizing the garbage situation again. That's something I think that merits some looking at that could be done in this calendar year. You know, so things like that, I want to see us get, you know, that money or get, that, get us in a situation where we're sound fiscally, we get our bond rating up, and we're on, you know, better footing where we could, you know, do some of these things in the future. But right now, I can't support using that surplus. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Bellinger. Alderperson Donahue. Uh, thank you. Um, <laughs> if you remember from a high school reading A Tale of Two Cities, um, which is actually kind of a fun novel, um, we have A Tale of Two Cities tonight. Um, I just want to thank both Mayor Van Akron and Mr. Amodio for really thoughtful, um, uh, detailed uh, presentations I think the two city problem comes from the fact that um, budget numbers, budgets are just planning documents. We, I mean, we know that. Uh, they don't predict precisely what's going to happen. We can go over, we can go under, there can be other sources of income. Some of the areas that the mayor has looked at show a fair discrepancy between what was, what was budgeted and what was actually spent. It paints a rosy picture of surpluses, returning money to taxpayers, and I think that overall, as we look at the, the whole picture, that's unrealistic, and it's not going to happen. We have some structural issues that we really need to address. Chairman Boren called it elephants. From my perspective, it's the heart and soul of the city. You know, what's important to us? What do we... What do we want our city to look like in two to four, five years? What do we need to do with our police, with the fire department? How do we address the library's needs? Um, public Works, I had a constituent, actually one of uh, Alderman Raisler's uh, constituents call me tonight and chew on me about the Department of Public Works. Um, where do we want to go in it, with all of those things? And, we haven't had a tax increase in this city, we need to remember, I think since 2005. I mean, that's remarkable when you think about it. As costs continue to go up, as expectations of services continue to go up, the city has done a fine job, for the most part, of addressing those issues. But it gets more and more complex um, as, as time goes on. I will vote to file this resolution uh, regarding the garbage fee because I think it is, um, it was, it was a tiny tax increase that we, that we had this past year that will go on for a year or two. But it's a, it's, it appears to be pretty critical to the way that we want to continue to do business, at least through the time at sunset. So I think at this point, it's unrealistic to get rid of that fee. Um, but we should look and think and dream about what we want the city to become and how we get there. Thanks. Thank you, Alderperson Donahue. Alderman Matichek, you're next. Thank you. Um, I'm reminded by uh, one of Einstein's quotes that insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different uh, results. I already stated that the mayor laid out uh, a very well uh, put together plan for a way to get rid of this. Um, the other thing is, we sit here and call it a tax increase, but we, it's a fee. It's not a tax. They can't write it off on the uh, taxes. They can't, they can't. It's a fee. If we want to increase the taxes, we should go ahead with a referendum and inc increase the taxes. I've heard from numerous constituents that that is what they want. If, you, if we're going to tax them, call it a tax. Don't hide behind a, a term, fee, and sit here and not call it what it is. Thank you, Alderman Matichek. Uh, Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Chairman. I, I, I don't think anyone here is really trying to hide what it is. I mean, it's a fee, it's a tax. Well, it doesn't matter what you call it. It was an increase. Citizens have to pay more money for the service they're, they're getting. Um, it's been touched on a few times tonight, and I, and I know we're, we're not going to rehash things tonight, but um, one of the things that I, I think we can seriously look at is the fact that in terms of the capital spending, the garbage trucks are still in there. We haven't spent that money. I, I, I supported privatizing garbage back then. I still do now. And before I could spend any surplus from this year to, to get rid of the garbage fee, to, to make a one quick fix for one year, 
I, I, I think we would um, make better use of that money improving roads in this city. Uh, Mary Lynn Donahue uh, hinted on the quality of life here in Sheboygan. Yes, uh, libraries are important, police, fire, safety. But we also need roads, and our roads are literally crumbling underneath us. I mean, I, I don't know how, ma how many of you were in the 4th of July parade where, when a fire truck ran over a sinkhole. I mean, that, that's just not okay. <laughs> so I, th that's one of the many reasons why I couldn't support this gar um, repealing the garbage fee right now and, and using that surplus just to get rid of the fee when we could use that to repave roads in this town. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Carlson. Alderman Van Akron, you're next. <clears throat> Thank you, Chairman. I, and I'm going to agree with some of what Alderman Carlson had to say. And in fact, last year we sat in a meeting about this time of year and talked about the elephants in the room and finding ways to make the long-term changes, the systemic changes that everybody agrees we need to make, but somehow it never seems to get done. Um, Alderman Carlson and I actually agreed at that time that we literally should have a whiteboard here discussing the services that the city provides and discussing how to prioritize those and go down the line and discuss where we're going to spend that money. Um, I do appreciate Alderman Donahue's comments in reference to budgeting really just being future plans and uses of our money. But when we go back and look at um, our surpluses over the last few years, I, I guess I found it quite surprising um, going back to last year, having those discussions in this room, discussing how are we going to get ourselves out of this hole, and then you know looking at a, a, a budget surplus from 2009 going from 7.8 million to 2011 going to 11.5 million in the undesignated fund balance, we, we increased that by $3.6 million in budget surplus money that we overcharged the people here in Sheboygan. It was their money, we overcharged them, and rather than giving it back to them, we put it in our savings account. The goods, bads, the merits of that, however you want to discuss it, that, that's what happened. Um, again, we can talk about the future plans going forward, where that goes from there, whether we continue with those surpluses, but unless we change how we are budgeting our money, make the actual cuts that we need to make, make the systemic changes we need to make, prioritize what services the city is going to provide, what services the people are willing to pay for, we, we need to have those discussions, and unfortunately, we're, we're not seeming to get around to those discussions. I agree with you, Chairman, as you said before, it seems like we're in the same spot as we were last year. However, there seems to be a surplus. And I will echo what uh, Alderman Heidemann said in Strategic Fiscal, uh, I believe, last week. When this presentation was were given, you know, he was, he was quite surprised. And, and the comment, I believe, was, well, how can we have a budget surplus when we needed to charge a garbage fee to make our budget work? I guess I'd ask that same question. And I bet the people of Sheboygan would ask that same question, too, is how can we have a budget surplus, but yet we increased a, a fee on everyone because we had to? Thank you, Alderman Van Akron. Uh, next, we have Alderman Versi. I call the question. Oh, come on. We have a motion to call the question. Uh, all in favor of calling the question? Second. Yeah, second. Oh, we have to get a second on the closing. Is there a second to call the question? All in favor of closing uh, the uh, calling the question signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The question is called. We have a motion and a second on the floor to file document number 6.10, which is number 14 on the agenda. Uh, would you call the roll, please? Bellinger? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson votes aye. Decker? No. Donahue? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Adam? Aye. Hoff? Aye. Lassard? Aye. Landowski? No. Matichek? No. Raisler? Aye. Van Akron? No. Vanderweel? Aye. Bercy? Aye. Wongman? Aye. 12 ayes. Four. Motion carries. Uh, now we're going to go back to uh, item number 13 on the agenda. You find it amongst my uh, papers here. No, we did 14. Okay, we just, we, 13. we talked about it, but we only voted on one. Yep. We're going to take a vote on number 13, and that was uh, council <coughs> document number 3.7 from July 2nd, 12, 
RO number 77-12-13, Mayor, Mayor requesting Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee to meet and include on their agenda various items. I'll entertain a motion on, on number 13. We'll file. Second. We have a motion and a second to file document number 13. Is there any further discussion? Alderman Hammond? Just, just under discussion, we did um, talk about any of these things in strategic fiscal for those that were there, and you'll see some things coming through. The mayor's entered some things. Um, so um, the points he made were duly noted, and they're being worked on. Thank you. Any other discussion? Uh, please call the roll on document on agenda item number 13 to file. Ballinger. Aye. Boren. Aye. Carlson votes aye. Decker. No. Donahue. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Heideman. Aye. Koth. Aye. Lassard. Aye. Lindowski. Aye. Matichek. No. Raisler. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Bursey. Aye. Longman. Aye. 14 ayes, two nays. Motion carries the file. Now we're going to go back and entertain a motion on uh, item number seven on the agenda, which is, was the 2012-2013 PowerPoint budget presentation as presented to the Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee on uh, June 5th, 2012. Uh, I'll entertain a motion on, on uh, number seven. Not really. Alderman Van Akron. I believe it would just be the presentation itself, so I would make a motion just to accept and file. Accept and file, yeah. Accept and file. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion to want to accept and file uh, number seven. Uh, any discussion? Uh, would you call the roll, Alderman Carlson? Bellinger. Aye. Boren. Uh, aye. Carlson. It's aye. Decker. Aye. Donahue. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Sard? Aye. Lindowski? Aye. Matichek? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bercy? Aye. Longman? Aye. 69. Uh, motion carries to accept and file. Uh, next, I want to skip down to uh, items number. We're, eventually, I think we're going to be able to take a lot of these as a group. But something that I also want to have discussion on tonight are items number 11 and then also uh, 12 on the agenda. And item number 11 on the agenda is council document number 11.4 from July 16, 2012, communication number 5-12-13, submitting a communication from Alderperson Hammond requesting that resolution number 234-3-4 by Alderpersons Graf, Wenninger, Bonet, Doyle, and Stefan, establishing a policy for applying the undesignated fund balance for the general fund's ensuing year's budget and to draft a resolution to establish a fund balance policy in accordance with GASB number 54. Alderman Hammond, do you want to sure. lead the discussion on this, please? please? Thank you. Um, I just wanted to make a couple points of clarification. Um, the fund balance reserve, when we looked at, um, as Alderman Van Akron mentioned, going from 7.6 to 11.5, uh, um, was, com was completely a function of GASB 54 in the way that they wanted, to us, wanted us to report um, general fund balances. And essentially what that does is it takes our working capital, which as the mayor mentioned earlier, is that $4 million that we use to pay salaries and expenses while we're waiting for the two tax payments that we have coming in in the spring and in September. Um, and so, although I appreciate um, the mayor's um, uh, re resolution or, or recommendation, I should say, to us, I think we need to look at that a little bit differently. You know, other municipalities may have lower um, undesignated fund balances, but they also have other things going for them that we do not, unfortunately. Um, my recommendation, um, and which was passed in finance last night, is to have a reserve fund, undesignated reserve fund balance minus working capital of 25%, which would mean that our reserve fund balance would go somewhere up into the about roughly 8.5 million range. Um, if we look at what's happened, and again, we can always look at things in one year, but if we look at the, over the last, uh, um, since 2005, we've dipped into two, our reserve funds about 2.7 million. Let's just assume for a second that 
you know, we needed it in 2015 to dip into our reserve fund balance again. Um, and we left things where we're at. Again, we have to bond in 2014. And if we're facing a $1.7 million deficit, that could adversely impact that. Um, I'd like to see a stronger reserve fund balance so that when we do have our ratings, and also, again, um, if we need to dip into it for whatever the reason, it's a substantial fund balance. So my recommendation and what was passed in finance yesterday would be to uh, have an undesignated fund balance of 25% minus working capital. Because um, those are funds that we use um, throughout the year until we get revenue coming in. Um, so um, that's my recommendation um, uh, uh, to the council on what was approved in finance last night. Uh, would you like to make that a motion, Alderman Hammond? Sure. What I just said. All right. Second. We have a <laughs> we have a motion and a second. You have all of that down now, Daryl, for the for the for the minutes, right? It's the same motion I made yesterday. Okay. Yeah. Good. Um, under discussion? Under discussion. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Under discussion, I know people say, well, if we look at what other municipalities are doing, you know, if we look at the audited, it's very easy to figure out. It's also very easy to figure out if we look at our audited financial statements because it's very easy to work out or back out our working capital out of that number. And that number there is our true undesignated reserve balance. You know, working capital, part of that reserve balance is also um, uh, basically uh, payments that we owe for work that was done in prior years. Um, so again, if we back out those numbers and say our true cash on hand needs to be 25% of our, um, uh, our, our reserve requirement needs to be 25%, I think we're going to be in a very, very good position going forward. Um, so thank you. Any further discussion? Okay. Uh, Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I guess I brought up some of these points at uh, Strategic Fiscal, and it's one of the reasons I won't be supporting this document. Can you, can you explain, Alderman Hammond, why we wouldn't use the GA, uh, excuse me, GASB 54, um, their way of documenting it for comparative purposes? I, I know I had brought it up, and I had asked uh, direct, uh, Chief Administrator Emodio uh, in reference to that for comparative purposes and trying to decide you know, whether we should be at 25%, as you're indicating here, or 30% or 27%, you know, for comparative purposes, we're, if we use the state's system, we can compare as to what, you know, everyone is using their working capital and their undesignated fund, where if we use your system, it's just the specifically undesignated stuff, not the working capital, but there isn't really a way to then compare that to the other municipalities. At least there wasn't last week when I asked the question. I wasn't able to get any information as to you know, how does that compare to other municipalities in reference to just their undesignated fund, not just the working capital? So I guess I would question why we don't use the state system as it's laid out. And then my other um, concern is... Let me answer that one first. Go for it. Because I'm not smart enough to remember multiple questions at a time. First off, again, if you look at it, audited financial statements, it's very easy to back that out if, if for some reason we need to continue to compare ourselves to municipalities. Um, you know, throughout the state. So it's very easy to back out their working capital and say this is what their actual cash on hand is. Secondly, um, again, I go back to, for Sheboygan's purposes, again, we're not Appleton, we're not um, Greenfield, we're not West Allis. Yes, we like to compare ourselves and benchmark, but at the end of the day, they have a different set of circumstances than we do. So if we wanted to look at it and say, okay, we want to use exactly as GASB um, 54 indicates, then we'd need to be Instead of 30 percent, we'd probably need to be at 37 or 38 percent if we want to include working capital and those types of things. So it's just in how you frame the number. You can certainly frame it that way if you want. I think it's cleaner to look at what we actually truly have for cash on hand for emergencies and opportunities versus diluting it with working capital, um, prior year payments, those types of things. So that's the reason I chose to back it out like that in my resolution. Okay, and just to follow up on that, do you have any of the information from comparables as to where that 25% would fall into? Um, I, again, just for, I realize it's not the only factor. In fact, it's one of many factors that we're talking about in reference to our bonding and our, and our ratings. Um, but again, I'd rather not reinvent the wheel. There's a lot of other communities that have the same type of undesignated funds. Does that 25% compare? Is it high, is it low? I guess I don't know because we don't have that information. And I guess I, I if I may respond. Go ahead. I guess I'm not as concerned what other municipalities are doing. If this is what fits for Sheboygan, 
And this is what helps us reserve our, our bond rating, and this is what helps us continue to move forward. If it makes sense, why would we care what other municipalities are doing? Uh, maybe, and just maybe, we're going to be a leader in this. And then my other concern is the, the final paragraph at the bottom, um, annually any, in, any increases, and, I, and again I know I brought this up as strategic fiscal, any increases will be divided out as you have laid out there between... That's the next document. Uh, is it? Yep. I'll wait Not for on that, that one. one <laughs> Thank you, Alderman Van Akron. Any other uh, discussion? Alderman Hammond, uh, before we vote, will you just <coughs> run the motion by us again so we, we are clear as glass of what we're voting on? Um, again, my, my motion would be to set our reserve requirement at 25% of uh, undesignated, subtracting out um, working capital, um, so that is a true cost or our true cash on hand um, going forward. Thank you. We have a we have a motion and a second on that. Under, under discussion, Alderman Van Akron. I'm sorry. Just a review. Then, we're currently at what level, and how much would we need to increase our undesignated fund level going forward to get to your 25 percent? Right now, we're at 7.7. 7. I think we'd have to go to about. Go ahead, Jim. We're at 21 percent now. We'd have to go to about 4 percent. Thank you, Alderman Van Akron. We have a motion and a second. Uh, Alderman Carlson, would you please call the roll? Ballinger. Aye. Boren. Aye. Aye. Deckert. Aye. Donahue. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Heideman. Aye. Koth. Aye. Lassard. Aye. Landowski. Aye. Matichek. Aye. Raisler. Aye. Van Akron. No. Vanderweel. Aye. Bercy. Aye. Longman. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Mr. Now we're going. Could we take a short break? Sure. Why, do, why don't we? Why don't we take a? Uh, why don't we uh, reconvene at twenty-five two? Okay. Uh, let's go to uh, number twelve on the agenda, which is uh, council document number eleven point three from July sixteenth, two thousand and twelve. Resolution number 44-12-13, a resolution committing fund balances in accordance with GASB number 54. Alderman Hammond, do you want to take that one for me too, please? Sure. Um, and this one is, um, and I think this is the one that Alderman Van Akron was starting to sit, Ubu, sit, was starting to elaborate to or uh, allude to um, in our last conversation. And this is what to do with any surpluses if we have them going forward. Um, and again, this one, you know, very much open to discussion on um, going forward because it's not a perfect document um, by any way, shape or form. But first off, when we look at uh, what uh, I proposed was first off, 50% um, of the uh, surplus would go towards our um, undesignated or basically our reserve fund. The remaining 50% would be divided equally between technology, IT, um, motor vehicle and equipment replacement, um, public works um, in, uh, and infrastructure, and economic development. And just to touch on each of those um, a little bit. First off, obviously, we just had the conversation about the reserve fund. Um, and one thing that this doesn't uh, address, and I think is where um, Alderman Van Akron is going to mention, is what happens if we're over that 25 percent and I think we we need to discuss that um, does that go back into the other areas what do we do with that I think it's a valid concern and we need to address that um, but the other areas are areas that when we look at the city in general we are very very uh, in, in big need of improvement technology um, you know thanks to, to Dave Augustin we've been able to get probably to 1995 um, and there's a lot of improvements that continue need, uh, need to continue to happen. Um, a lot of our systems still don't talk to each other. Um, they need to talk to each other. Um, there's a lot of uh, up upgrades and things that you know, we need to look at. Motor vehicle fund, um, I think we've uh, hit that conversation, but again, just to reiterate, we're looking at, um, you know, over the course of the next uh, several years, roughly $4 million of, of equipment upgrades um, that need to happen. Public works, I think, in, I think we've uh, mentioned that several times, but that part of that going to infrastructure improvements and then again economic development. I think everyone can agree that one of the ways that we can um, 
continue to grow and, and hopefully um, alleviate some of this problem is to attract new businesses, attract new jobs, and build that tax base um, so that you know, maybe we can enhance the revenue side versus cutting the expense side. Um, so that was the thought process behind that. Um, again, the one thing that you know, wasn't addressed is, you know, and I think this is where Alderman Van Ackeren, the question he was gonna ask was what happens if we get over that 25% um, in our undesignated, our, our reserve fund, what happens to that 50% that would normally be allocated there? And that's a fair question um, that I think you know, we should take up as a group. Um, my thoughts would be that that portion goes back into these four or leaves it as a council undesignated to determine what the greatest need in that particular year is and go from there. Um, but I think if we look at um, these, these areas, I don't see a, a time <laughs> where we would not have areas, in especially infrastructure, where we couldn't designate a significant amount of money to infrastructure and probably not even put a dent in it. So that was the thought process behind that um, and uh, worked with uh, Nancy and Jim um, on, in formulating this. But again, this was kind of the, the rough draft of what to start to do with any surpluses if we have them. And keep in mind, again, this is if we have a surplus um, you know, in, in a given year. So um, that's uh, all I have. Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Chairman. I, I know another question that was posed dur during strategic fiscal planning was that, uh, at, I, I'll just answer the question. At, at some point, it'll be nice when this city is essentially up to par in terms of infrastructure, roads, our, our parks are not um, violating federal codes. Once we get to that point, once, once we are at the place where we want to be, any surplus could go back to the taxpayers. But I, I think we're a far, away, a far way away from that. So at this point, we need to designate where that money's gonna go. Thank you, Alderman Carlson. Alderman Versi, you're next. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I think, me personally, one of the most important parts of this is that money is not going towards salary and benefits. This is going to build our city and make our city better. That's the most important part, I think, of this, is that extra money, if we have that surplus, is directly going back into the city where it needs to be. So that's why this, I'm in full support of it, doing this just for that reason alone. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Versi. Any other discussion? Alderman Van Akron. Since everybody's waiting for the question, I'll ask it. Um, <laughs> part of my concern with this document, there's, there, I have several, but part of the concern is, again, how the, the money is going to be distributed after there is a surplus. And again, that, that's obviously granting that there is going to be a surplus or possibly a surplus. You know, based on this year's projection, we could be looking in the, the million dollar range, million two. Um, this document would say half of that would go towards the undesignated fund balance. The other half would then be divided up into the areas that you see there um, with no uh, remedy to send that back to the taxpayers whose money it is. Again, we've overcharged them. Again, this is a surplus scenario. We've overcharged them for our services and there is no cause or way to give them that money back and that's a concern for me. I, I, I think there should be the first priority should be to give that money back and then have some of these be the secondary options with a supermajority vote to say this is a no-brain project, we need to do this, let's spend the money here. I'd be a lot more comfortable if that's how it read. Unfortunately, it doesn't. Like I said, it gives no avenue to give the people their money back that we've overcharged them. Um, that's really my main concern with this. Uh, Alderman Hammond, you can respond. Sure, thank you, and I and I appreciate that concern, and I would have I would agree with you if we were raising the levy every year, year over year. Um, but at the end of the day, what this means, if we have a surplus, it means that our department heads did a nice job of managing their budgets, and it gives us an opportunity to take those um, savings and put them to things that our taxpayers and constituents. Um, have challenges with and infrastructure I don't think there's anybody in this room that probably hasn't gotten a phone call in the last two months regarding infrastructure um, so what we're gonna say is hey we're gonna take that away while you, and give it back to you which again if if nothing all else being equal and everything was great I would completely agree with you we've got a laundry list of issues that our constituents have told us and our taxpayers have told us our concerns that we're gonna say we're just going to ignore those um, because it feels good to give it back. Believe me, I would like to have it back. Um, I know how much I pay in property taxes. Um, and again, I would like it back too, but I also understand that if we have a surplus, there's probably a better need or a stronger need for that money 
And one of them is, you know, again, making our infrastructure stronger. If we can make City Hall more efficient through technology, there may be cost savings further down the road. Yeah, I, I can understand what you're saying, um, but I think in practicality, we need to address those things that our citizens are saying need to be addressed. And if we are lucky enough to have surpluses, that's an opportunity to do it. Thank you, Alderman Hammond. Alderperson Donahue, you're next. Um, I would go along with Alderman Van Akron's uh, remarks if there was a, a process for when we undercharge that we get more money from people. Because I think if you're going to do one, you should do the other. I don't think that's practical. My son, Michael Van Akron, called me and said, Ma, I need a new computer. And I checked my savings account, and I have $786 in my savings account. He's 26. I started to weep. You have a savings account? This is terribly exciting. Why would I tell Michael, don't bother with a savings account. Don't bother saving up for a computer that you might need. Take that money and spend it now. Or give it back to your mom and dad, to whom you owe lots of money. There's nothing wrong with savings. We the concept of giving money back. I remember Tommy Thompson. Remember Tommy Thompson as governor? We had a budget surplus. All of that money was returned to the taxpayers. Hundreds of millions of dollars. We got two or three hundred dollars. Nobody remembered at the end of the year that they got a refund, but the next year there was a terrible deficit. So this is not a sensible approach trying to, if in fact we are so flooded with money and we have done such a terrible job at budgeting, and there is such excessive funding, the streets are repaired and there's peace in the kingdom, then we might take a look at it. But I think at this point, we're doing what is, what we tell our children to do, which is save up, save some money and you'll have it for a rainy day. Thank you, Alderperson Donahue. Alderman Carlson, you're next. Okay, uh, Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, this will be my last one on this one. I, and I'm gonna answer some of both of those. Um, I would agree with uh, Alderman Hammond. We do have a laundry list of things that do need to get done. And, and again, this is only in the case if we have a surplus and we're getting to that 25%, and what do we do with after we've gotten to those levels that you know we, we've decided is the appropriate level or, or people have decided is the appropriate level for our savings account. Again, we're doing all those things and then we're deciding where to spend the people's extra money rather than there being an option to give it back, and there isn't. Um, there's, there's just a blanket protocol as to where we're going to spend it, no specific projects, no specifics as to where it's just going to go. We're just going to blanketly say, we'll find a way to spend it here. And I guess I'm not comfortable with that. I'd be much more comfortable saying, you know, again, even if it was a specific project, which I realize isn't, you know, a possibility right now. But as you go forward to have a specific project in mind to say this is what we're going to put it for is, is one thing. But just to lay out a blanket policy is we're going to put it in these departments, whether they need it or not, we're going to give it to them and let them find a way to spend the excess money we've charged people. I am not okay with that at all. Thank you, Alderman Van Akron. Alderman Heideman, you're next. You go, oh, go ahead. Okay. Um, okay, the one question, I like getting that money back too, but one of the things that I don't know how I could include this in a, a motion, but if we have additional reserves and we're going to put money away, we can no longer have a fee at the same time. I mean, we had a reserve, we had excess money, and we charged people a fee. Is there any way I can tie in a motion to say to make sure that, these are, that our citizens are never feed for services uh, and while we still have, res when we have an excess amount of money so we can may maybe just eliminate the possibility of ever having a fee again? Well, it, Go ahead. Thank you. Again, I understand where you're coming from on that. The, the challenge is, again, let's say the surplus is $100,000. And you know a fee. Let's just use the garbage fee is generating eight hundred and seventy thousand. So we're going to get rid of eight hundred and seventy thousand of revenue because we were able to save a hundred thousand dollars of surplus. Now, if if or create a hundred thousand dollars of surplus. Now again, again, as I indicated, this is if we're at twenty five percent, and we want to look at saying once we're at twenty five percent, that half goes back to the taxpayers. I'd be happy to entertain that. Um, but again. I think one of the things we need to look at is where a lot of our needs are. And again, one of the portions is motor vehicle funds and $4 million in the next three years. This isn't going to solve that. Um, so my th thought process, and, and as we were discussing this, was having that money go into those reserve funds will start help to build those reserve funds for when we need to use them. 
Um, and I agree, I agree, I understand where you're coming from conceptually. It's just hard because we don't know what that surplus is going to be and to say every fee that we have is going to go away because one year we might have a surplus, you know, I'm not sure is practical. I gave it a shot. You I, did. I guess, yeah, yeah, the idea is <laughs> I don't like the fee any more than anybody else in here. Or, um, I think one again, of the, But yeah. to have a $1.2 million res an additional in, uh, that we're going to be able to spend or we had around and have a fee at the same time, I kind of, it kind of gets to, it gets to me a little bit. So in the future when we have those accesses, nobody's talking about, well, you need actually you need a little bit more. So we have the access, and then we're going to put a fee with it to get to a certain amount. I guess I just don't like that, that type of taxation, and I, ho I hope we can't see it again. Thank you, Alderman Heidemann. Alderman Raisler, you're next. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I hate to agree with Alderman Heidemann, <laughs> and it, it pains me. We, we know. But um, I'm wondering if we can't put some terminology in there that um, it is recommended that 50% would go back to the undesignated fund and the other 50% would be uh, divided up amongst um, the, the different entities unless the council decides otherwise. I mean, so we have some leeway after a while when it comes to the fact that we have a million dollar excess and let's just say we get to the 25% and we have some fee out there such as the garbage and the council wants to say, yes, we, we have that ability to do that. Um, I, I don't know if we can word it that way, or if it is, I'd make that in the form of the motion for it, um, so that the terminology does give us the ability to take that money and not be, be bound by putting it here. Is that a motion? Is that, oh, yes. I just want a clarification on that. So if we're at, if we're at 25%, then that 50% would be kind of at the discretion of the council. Is that what you're indicating? Once we've hit sure. the 25% reserve? Correct. I would leave okay. it the ex exact same way you have it, but putting the clause in at the end that the council may look at adjusting these numbers. You know, we can go the two thirds vote or a okay. vote if we wanted to, you know, if, if it was something such as this. If we're at 25%. Yes. Correct. Okay. Alderman Carlson. And, uh, by the way, oh, before we, before I call on you, Alderman Carlson, we have a motion. Was I'll there second a, it. There's okay. no. We have, we have, I, don't we have to act on the original resolution first point before of order. we can amend it? Yeah, we have. So I move to send the resolution to the council with a positive recommendation. Second. Uh, just a point of uh, order. We have ahead, a motion Alder on the floor. Uh, Alderman Raisler is his prop proposition. I think, as worded, would be an amendment yes. to the mo motion that is on the floor. Yeah. If that if it, amendment has a second, then we vote on the amendment, mm -hmm. right. and then as amended, right. we vote on the motion. Any other motion, unless it's a point of, of privilege, would be, would be out of order, I think. If, if you consider that to be a friendly <laughs> amendment, sure. and, I, and I think it is, and you're second, Alderman Heidemann, so I believe we could, we could vote on the, uh, we could vote on the, uh, the amendment first, and then that passes, then we'll move like on, vote like on that. the document as amended. Uh, do we, does anybody need an explanation of what we're, what we're, the motion that, uh, oh, good Lord. I can, I can, so if I understand the mo your amendment would be that if we are at 25%, that 50% that would normally go to the undesignated fund or the reserve fund would be at the council's discretion. Yes. Take your time and think about that. No, no, I'm, I'm, okay. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at, I, I, okay. I don't know if I'd go with 50, I'd go with 100% for that matter. Okay. The, the, the excess fund balance is recommended that 50% go to the undesignated fund, 50% be divided equally amongst the, the agencies you spoke of, period. The uh, Common Council has the ability to override this percentages um, to designate the money at, at, towards other fees or um, what, it, what it so deems necessary. There may be something that, that we need 100% of this to go to all of it to infrastructure. We may have a, a, a project coming up like Eisner Avenue where we need, you know, let's just pick another street is going to be done and we, we need this million dollars to go to that, that we have the ability to, to designate what we want to do with this money if something else is, is, is differs from what it is. If not, it goes back to where we're at. Uh, Alderman Riesler, I heard you say something earlier about a possible 
uh, two thirds majority of the council, or do you want a simple majority? If, if that's something that everybody would be more comfortable with, I'd gladly include that. It, that it has to be a two thirds vote to change where it's going from in this original is that all right document. With the is that all right with a second? It's all right with me. Okay, we? we hold it. I got uh, some lights on here. Alderman Van Akron, you're first. Uh, then we have next on the line here with the lights flashing is Alderperson Donahue. Well, just from a parliamentary procedure perspective, I think it would be very important that we nail down your language just so that we all understand it. And it should, it should probably not be a moving target. Oh, right. I know we, we went from 50% to 100, but we're talking about the whole, the whole amount as far as going to the different departments. Sometimes when these things get very complicated, what we could do is move on to another item of business and uh, Alderman Raisler could work on some, sometimes when you write it down, work on that wording Doesn't and then we could come me, back. <laughs> Miracles could happen. <laughs> um, but but I just because I think it's an, a very important issue and um, I think things have gotten a little fuzzy around the edges. So that would be my suggestion as we move on then come back with a, a written amendment that we all understand. Well, and I, I guess the final amendment can be, can be completed when we go to council. I guess I'm looking for the recommendation if we're even interested in doing this, um, and we can clean the language up and, and debate it then if it's, if it's not what everyone wants. I guess I'm just looking at getting the, if everybody says, no, we don't want to do this, we, we get to move on to the original one and we're done. The only problem is at this point I have no idea what the amendment is. Right, and it's, it's vague, but it's, it's a recommendation to the council. It's not necessarily we're taking action on it at this, at this time. Is it 50%? Is it 100%? It's 100. Right, 100%. Three thirds, or is it simple majority? Three quarters. What? Seven eighths? <laughs> That's the only problem. No, I understand. Uh, I, I guess I'm going with two thirds. And if that's your reason for not doing it and someone wants to amend it, to, uh, a friendly amendment to something else, that's fine too. But uh, I, like I said, we can clean the language up before it goes to the council. I'm just looking at the, see if it's something we want to recommend that or not. And may, so your, your amendment or your amendment is with two thirds vote, if we're at 25% in our reserve and we've met our standard, then at the council's discretion with two thirds vote, 100% of the surplus could be designated elsewhere. Correct. It doesn't have to be. It can go right back to where it was, but we may right. have other projects. If there's two-thirds, yeah, if there's yes. not two-thirds, both. Okay. Yes. So. Okay. Uh, Alderman Bellinger, you're next. So the fallback would be then if there's Please not. Please stand. Thank you, Chairman. The fallback would be then if there's not a two-thirds vote, if that fails, then does it automatically revert back to the 50% and then the, you know, the other 50% going into the designated accounts? Mm-hmm. That's my understanding. Correct. Uh, first of all, I got Alderman Van Akron, and then we'll have Mayor Van Akron. Thank you. Um, I guess that, that, that certainly helps with some of the language because it does allow for the ability, once we get to that 25%, for the council at a two thirds vote to decide. Again, not that it goes to these four areas. Again, as Alderman Ristler brought up, and I, I certainly, as much as he likes to not disagree with Alderman Heidemann, I certainly try to not agree with Alderman Ristler. Um, <laughs> it does make sense because if there is a road project that would require all of the surplus that year, we could do that rather than splitting it up into quarters like this. Or again, if, if we actually would decide to give the people their money back, that could be an option as well, I would think, in, in that discussion. So I would certainly be a lot more comfortable with that amendment. Thank you, uh, Alderman Van Akron. <clears throat> Mayor, did you have some comments you wanted to make? I just had a question. What are the four areas? I don't have that document. What are the four areas you I got it, Jim, right here. Um, what we've got now is IT, okay. um, motor vehicles, okay. vehicles and equipment, I should say, building improvements and in infrastructure, and economic development. Sorry? Did you say motor vehicle, motor vehicle fund? No, motor vehicles and equipment replacement. Could be. Economic development. Okay, we've got a, we've got a, a friendly motion on document I, agenda item number twelve. We've got an, uh, a friendly amendment and a second. 
Uh, do you want to call the roll, Alderman Carlson, on the amendment only? Ballinger. No. Boren. Aye. Carlson votes aye. Decker. Aye. Donahue. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Hyman. Aye. Aye. Koth. No. Lassard. Aye. Lindowski. Aye. Matichek. Aye. Racer. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Mercy. Aye. Wangman. Aye. 14 ayes. Okay, the, uh, now we'll vote on the uh, document as amended. We already had a, a, a motion and a second on that one, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Uh, we want to call the roll on the document as amended, please. Yes. Bellinger. Aye. Boren. Aye. Aye. Decker. Aye. Donahue. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Ah. Aye. Sard. Aye. Lindowski. Aye. Matichek. Aye. Raisler. Aye. Van Akron. No. Vanderweel. Aye. Percy. Aye. Longman. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries as amended. Okay, let's go back to the uh, agenda items we have not covered, and I may need a little help on this, but I believe we could vote on a, as a group on uh, item number eight, number nine, number 10, item number 15, item number 16, item number 17 through 21. I think we can vote on those as a package. Uh, Alderman Hammond, that's basically what you did last night at finance? Uh, correct. That's the uh, pretty much the budget with all the recommendations from the various um, committees, lawn licensing, salaries and grievances, PPNS, um, included in those um, <coughs> budgets. And that would and that would mirror the uh, presentation that Director Amodio gave. Then you have those in there, Jim. Yep. And that would also um, yes. So I'll entertain a motion to take those documents that I just mentioned, uh, 8, 9, 10, 15, 16, and 17 through 21. I'll entertain a motion on those documents. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve those documents. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Ballinger. Aye. Board. No. Aye. Decker? No. Donahue? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Koth? Aye. Lassard? Aye. Lindowski? Aye. Matichek? No. Raisler? Aye. Van Akron? No. Vanderweel? Aye. Bercy? Aye. Longman? Aye. 12 ayes. Motion carries. Next thing on the agenda is the meeting, next meeting date that'll to be determined depending on referrals to the Committee of the Whole. I'll entertain a motion. Uh, before I entertain a motion to adjourn, I would like to thank everybody. Uh, I think we had a lively discussion tonight. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Chair votes aye. We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone.